occurred. With that, I conclude my presentation. Thanks for your time, and I welcome any questions or comments. And there are uh, three exhibits. I mentioned the first of the intersection, but I forgot. The second exhibit is, I think what, if the yellow is a curve that should be, you know, that would make the lot safer, would be the yellow curve, and I would flatten it out. And then the third exhibit, you know, it's just typical signage. And you know, the, the signage. So. And that's, that's basically it, so. If y'all got any questions, I'll be glad to answer. Right, thank you, Mr. Allen. Any one from the board have any questions for Mr. Allen? Appreciate you putting the time and work into this. Very detailed. Thank you. Very detailed. Well, I was on the road coming back from the beach yesterday and last night. So <laughs> maybe if you can just say a word in there. Good suggestions, I think, we'll get with the road manager. You know, as a board, uh, he'll take a look at this. And, we certainly appreciate you being concerned and bringing this. Well, up. one last thing, real quick. Uh, the Harold guy, I personally knew their family from West Point. Well, when he was killed, they uh, got permission from the supervisor in Clay County to bury him on their family property with the understanding that they would be planted as a cemetery, like the code calls out. So I and another guy could go out there and survey that grave and then lay out the cemetery, you know, to make it all line up. I mean, that that wasn't easy because I know the family and, I mean, it was, I mean, that was tough. And I mean, I just hate to see, I just hate to see anybody else, you know, have to go through that. So, you know, well, we hate that and, and that'd be certainly something to take into consideration. Of course, it has to be, you know, something that the landowners in that area have to agree to. And I've already kind of looked at that on the south side, but I didn't have time to put it in here. Uh, I know Charlie Pilkington was one guy, you know, it was like three more that, you know, you could get a little bit of right away from them, but, you know, I mean, if we get to that point, but, you know, or y'all, not me, too. We certainly appreciate you, Mr. Allen, coming today. Uh, uh, but that is well past three minutes, so we apologize. Well, I appreciate we, we appreciate these suggestions to our road manager so we do something moving right. forward. I right. appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Anyone else? All right. Seeing no one else, uh, request to purchase fire pumpers, Mr. Warner. How's everybody doing today? Great. Good. 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 Good morning. Uh, as y'all all know, uh, we've had a rough week too in the county, you know, the events that the gentleman mentioned. In order to keep these deaths down, in order to, uh, I said, oh, I'm to work and uh, function properly, we have to order, we have to get the proper equipment for the county fire department to operate. Also, we also have an obligation to keep the insurance and taxes down. Uh, in order to do that, we have to replace our equipment. Today, I'm here to kind of go over with you what we've got. We've got the Maven truck that will be coming in in the next couple of weeks uh, that we purchased from last year. And I, I kind of want to go over the, I'm here to ask, uh, request that we purchase two trucks this time. Uh, normally, we kind of request to get one truck, but if we purchase two trucks at one time, we'll save some money. Uh, so I kind of want to go over that. The trucks keep going up. They go up on an average five to six percent every year. So if you purchase one truck every year, kind of like we're scheduled to do, we're eating that five to six percent, that ten to twenty thousand dollars. So if we purchase two at one time, we're going to save that money. We'll save twelve thousand dollars. I'm going to kind of go down this list to kind of show you. The Sturgis truck cost three hundred seven thousand dollars in my team budget. The Maven truck that's coming in this time is going to cost three hundred nine thousand dollars. Now we've been working on this for the last six months on the purchase price of the truck, and I've gotten three estimates. Uh, if you look out there beside it, the uh, 319 is from Rosenbauer, 328 is from Pierce, and 327 is from K and B. 
So the, the, the truck that we're fixing to purchase this year is going to cost 319000 So you see that it's gone up $10,000 in this, this year already. Now, the Sturgis truck, which will be purchased the next, you can already see it's going to go up to $341,000. I mean, that's a big jump. I mean, and that's just the cost, you know, it's kind of like the cost of living. It's just the cost of materials, stuff like that. It's just that 5 6 percent increase every year that they charge you. It just keeps going up. Uh, so, if I purchase, if we go and purchase a normal truck like we have been constantly doing, if I just purchase one truck, it's going to cost 319000 And four months from now, after we roll over to the next budget, the next budget, and I go to prepare to buy the next truck for the next budget year, that truck's going to cost 341 which will be a total of 660 So, if I purchase both of them now, and I've discussed this with Rosenbauer, and I, I want to make, I want to be clear on this. You see the 307, the Sturgis truck's about, Sturgis, the next truck is going to be 341 They're getting the same truck, the exact same truck. There's no difference in the truck. It's just three years later. And you can see that it's almost $30,000 difference. So what I'm requesting to do today is we purchase two trucks today. And we're right here at the end of the budget year. So this truck will fall in next year's budget year, which would be the Bell Schoolhouse truck. And then we're going to delay the actual delivery into the next year's budget year, which would be the 22 budget year, which would just be two months later. And we've already got this worked out. And, and we would drop the price down to 329 on that uh, next Sturgis truck. So basically we're saving $12,000 by purchasing two trucks a day instead of me purchase one truck a day and then come back and purchase another truck four months from now. Emily, how would we, and I appreciate you bringing that to us, Patrick. Um, so Bell Schoolhouse and Sturgis, <coughs> Miss Emily, how would we pay for this or how do they pay for this? What would we do or not do in this scenario? Are we okay? We're okay. They got the money in the budget. Okay. And y'all in number two, when we start doing the reverse auction, this is one of the items that you can't bid out because they're, they, they, they are the price they are. Yeah. So they're going to keep going up. You know, this is one of the items that is government mandated at certain prices. And they're in bad district needed that truck, you know, throughout the county, especially the students and Bell Schoolhouse. Um, I'm fine with it if we can afford it. But, uh, it's in the budget. We've looked at the numbers. we got them staff money. And like I said, and, and then it's, it takes a year to build a truck. The maiden truck's coming in right here at the end of this year. So if we purchase this truck today, the next year's truck will be coming in the same time next year, right at the end of the budget year. And then all they're going to do is delay the delivery. You know, it'll just sit out there on the sidewalk at their factory for another month. And that next year budget rolls around, it will be in the next budget year. So it would be the same thing. It would not affect us in our budget year. Yeah, I want us to the purchase of both trucks. Okay. Motion by Mr. Williams. I second that. Second by uh, Supervisor Miller. <coughs> Anyone discussion on the matter? If not, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Motion carried. Thank you, Mr. Warren. Yeah, thank you, Pat. I do have one other thing. I think, I, I, sorry, I left it off. Uh, I would like today to ask permission for resolution. And as I mentioned earlier, we've had a lot of bad accidents in the county lately, but I do want to recognize. There was about six gentlemen who went on a call uh, at 21 Apartments where a gentleman got shot in his leg and went through this leg and went through his other leg with both arteries and he got shot in his back. And uh, mm -hmm. our guys responded to that and uh, saved his life. We got a call from UMC down there at the doctors at the hospital and they congratulated us for saving his life. They were really impressed with our guys who put four tourniquets on his legs. And uh, I would like the board, uh, I want to, well, uh, what we'll do really is, is, is just that, is get with Miss Emily Garrett and we'll get the wording on a resolution. And then certainly we can present, we can all sign that, get it, you know, framed, et cetera. And then maybe get them recognized. Get them recognized in the, maybe our first October <coughs> meeting, um, you know, whatever is convenient for them, for you. But certainly we'd like to recognize them. I'm, I'm going to move the resolution by a while. Got a motion by, by Supervisor by Howard, second by Supervisor Williams, that we get a resolution um, 
to the volunteers that saved that man's life to 21 apartments. All those in favor say I, 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 I must be kidding. One more pass. I'm sorry. I apologize again. Uh, Number three. Y'all, three. y'all know Mr. Kurt Rosenheim's retirement is coming up on October 11th. Uh, I would also like to get a resolution to recognize his retirement uh, for about October 11th. I'll pass. So move. Motion by Supervisor Miller. Second by Supervisor uh, Miller to certainly recognize uh, Mr. Kurt Rosenheim for all four years. years of service for two. So any discussion on that? If not, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Right. And we'll do that possibly at the same time. Sure. We certainly appreciate that. So anything else from from the uh, Do you want to go ahead and just in terms of that resolution for the fire alarm, we can go ahead and plug the information in, but but the reality is, is that they can go ahead and, and if you if, if I'm not taking up too much time they want to well, you need this to go ahead and be able, assuming that they're they're okay with it. Okay. We need a resolution, I mean, a board order to allow the fire department to give fines for these these alarms that are going off you know, constantly. Um, I'm suggesting a $500 file. Uh, well, you get we've three strikes. Is that right? We, we've got it wrote up. What I did is I basically went off the city, same policy the city had. If you respond to a, a fire alarm, X amount of times, say five times, a false alarm, and we give them warning. If it's one more, we give them a fine and treat it every time. And I basically copied and said, I pretty much identical to the city. And I want to give you an example. Is since school started back this month, we run six false alarms out there at some apartments right past the college. I mean, it's pretty bad. And every time you get the truck and go and respond, you know, you're not, it's, you know, it's a possibility it increases, you know. Let me have this. A false alarm in the system, I get. But if somebody goes out there and physically pulls that alarm, would that kind of strike against them? Because no, that would be up to our discretion not, too. And we won't, yeah. we won't have to charge them. I can go out there and give them a warning and say, hey, you know, just don't let it happen again. But if it's an electrical room that keeps going off at three in the morning, like yes. other apartments that we know about, yes, sir. So yeah. I, I, I've got a question. So the property owner. Is fine of the individual and the property owner. Okay, gotcha. And and most of the owners, you know, they're corporate owners. Most of them are not even local, so it won't affect the local business. But most of them, are, most of the owners out there are in Texas. And we've got that wrote up. We just, we just, uh, what do we do? I got it. Do you agree with that? There, I'm not talking about So we need a motion and a second on that to yes, sir. Adopt this policy. That multiple fire alarms and how you draw that up that you're subject to a fine after so many false alarms it, what, and it, it mimics the cities and I apologize take it after three times or after so many times so any discussion on that if not I need a motion in a second to uh, do you uh, yes, one question uh, sure. do you have many residential uh, areas that have false false alarms every now and then we'll have a residence but you know, when it's a residence, it's, it's that one residence here one time, one residence over here one time. They're not going to be in this criteria, and if they are, like I say, it'll be just a discretion of the, the enforcer. It doesn't seem to be a problem. Right? No sir, no problem, no problem with residences. It's, it's really just apartment buildings, commercial apartment buildings. Mostly the section out there past the Mississippi State, 21 apartments. So I think so. They have a high volume of uh, students. Motion or second? Motion. Motion by Supervisor Miller. That's second by Supervisor Howard. Uh, any more discussion on the matter? Not all those that are in favor say aye. Aye. Motion carries you know. so, Thank you, Patrick. Thank you. And we'll get that signed you know, as soon as it gets the, you know, as soon as they get that drawn on. Yes, sir. All right, moving right along. Uh, Department of Human Services, uh, Ms. Butler and Mr. Williams. Alright, we'll double back on that. Request stop sign on Blackjack and at Bardwell Road, Mr. Jerry Bardwell. I think most everybody knows me. Jerry Bardwell instead of Jerry. But 
man, if Burns ever gets through with that road, they already making a racetrack out of it. And I, I just figured it put a bar, uh, stop sign on on Blackjack Road because they already got one on Bardwell Road. But what I came up here to see about was taxes on all this old equipment I've been running. <laughs> uh, in fact, uh, I talked to Alan Morgan about it. And they keep charging. I did some, I put some excess dirt off of when Burns built a helicopter plant over there. They put, they, they went and put stickers on the back of my tractor so they wouldn't, they, so his help wouldn't put fuel in my tractor, you know. So, man, they, they put barred well construction. And man, ever since then, they've been charging me with construction tax. And they got $800 on uh, house furniture and man, all I got to uh, telephone in effect, and that was when I used to have to get a permit from Jackson, you know, to haul that old big dozer. Right. But the rest of that stuff, that sim and that uh, that old six ninety and that motor grade, it hadn't run in three years, and they still charging me tax on. I, they sent me a bill the other day, uh, $1,200 on that, on the construction tax. I guess I'm, I'm sorry, Mr. Nordwell, I'm not following you. I thought we were going to talk about stop sign here, but... Uh, well, I, I just happened to, that was, uh, here's a bill for the... What this, what this, oh, are you? Yeah, I'm familiar with Here's the tax on that, on that old equipment. I'm talking about the, I'm talking about the stop sign. Stop sign, yeah, yeah. But I was talking about, I was just asking. Tax on the equipment. What did, what did Mr. Morgan say about charging you tax on, on, on that equipment? He said, there wasn't no way I could do, get out of it to set, to set it. Well, you can't. You can't sell all that old equipment to nobody. I've been trying, I've had it on the internet a month or so, and I've sold one wrong disc. Is it, is it registered, I mean, are, are you registered in Jackson on the Bartwell Construction? That's what I, that must be. And, and then that equipment is, is registered under your construction uh -huh. business. You have to dissolve yeah. your construction business like in the eyes of the state or the county especially. But that's, that really is in the purview of the tax assessor and collector versus us. So. I, I think you're right. Are you under an LLC? No, I'm not under the LLC. They, but they still got you licensed stuff to, to, to it's just, I had, I had, <coughs> listed on the Bardwell construction for a while, but I just quit. All I do is land clear. I'm down here clearing up a spot of was planted in CRP back years ago. Are you, are you, yeah, are you getting paid? Are you operating to get paid for it? Um, are you receiving payment for what you're clearing? Yeah. Then, then that, that's going to hold. But they, they don't charge tax on land clear. You've got some old equipment that you've been, that's not even running, that you've been charged. Yeah. You're going to have to get with, with, with uh, the tax professor's office and let him know and, and, and bring him proof that that equipment is no longer in wow. service. In what, your, who's the tax professor's office? Uh, at the morning. Oh, so, yeah. You, you, you just have to bring him. I, I talked to Blue Street to him, but he said 
on the way to uh, uh, get out of it and sell all that. Uh, if you have proof that you're no longer using it and it's inoperable, you should be able to take that off of, off of what's listed under your business. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I don't know the ins and outs for that, but I'm sure there's a way. Well, they used to have a tax thing. Let's see, your pandemic, there's a virus, and you it had a certain month you could come up here and speak to them about taxes. But I just threw that stop sign thing in there about the uh, called man, the way they drive on that blackjack road now. They gonna run over somebody. People fly everywhere in the county. And that, I, I mean, people on Silk Creek Road were asking me how to slow people down and, and send the <laughs> sheriff's officers out there. We can stop <clears throat> irresponsible driving yeah. in this county. We would, uh, we would climb the mountain that day. Well, Mississippi State has got to where they'll sit up there and with the blue lights and all, and that slowed them down a little bit. But whenever they're not there, boy, Limited manpower makes it yeah. limited. That's what I was saying. Yeah, that's what I was saying. It was one there one time before. You know what? Uh, you, you remember it was freeway stop there, before. Yeah. 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 The blackjack traffic is already backed up as it is. And we start stopping that traffic there. There's a three-way stop, it's not a four-way stop. No, I will say that. Bob will need a stop sign. We have Bob will got a stop sign. Bob will need a stop sign. But there's no need to put a, a stop sign for blackjack. A blackjack is just straight through, just straight through traffic, traffic flow. Man, you ought to go to, Al you ought to, go to Oklahoma. And they got to stop flying every square mile. They're not going to work on blackjack because we already got a traffic flow. We got a traffic flow problem. Now, that's my opinion. Of course, we need to take that on advisement and let uh, our engineer, and, and, and that's my motion, is to take it on advisement and let our engineer and our road manager look at the feasibility. Right. And he's right. You have to get, and that, I'll take that motion because you have to get approval to add or delete stop signs, reconfigure roads, angles like Mr. Allen came earlier about. You have to, you have to get approval from your county engineer, and he sends it to the state level to get approval as well. So, but, but that's uh, Supervisor uh, Williams' motion. Second to that. Second. Second by Supervisor Trainer. Okay. Any more discussion on the matter? If not, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Motion carries. And we'll do just that, uh, Mr. Barnwell. So, all right. But as far as the taxes, I recommend you yes. at least go back and talk to uh, Mr. Morgan and ask him if there's anything, any proof that you can bring in to show that that equipment is no longer in use. Well, they got eight hundred dollars on house furniture. And I hadn't got nothing but a fax and a telephone. <laughs> well, all right. All right. Thank you. Thank, you. Thank, you. thank you so much. Okay, thank you, Mr. Paul. All right, moving right along. Mr. Simmons, vicious dog ordinance. If y'all are okay with it, I'm probably just going to kind of hang out right here because I have a lot of papers, and I'd rather have the mask off. It's a little easier to communicate with it. I do have all these pieces. Got you got They've got a binder. <laughs> My name is Lamar Simmons. I live on a farm in the Center Grove area out of Maven. Uh, I really appreciate y'all appreciate y'all letting me come and talk today. Y'all are the first person that's really given me a voice and an opportunity for a problem I've been having for a long time. I'm here to talk about the Vicious Dog Ordinance and more importantly the uh, role of the Humane Society within the Vicious Dog Ordinance. Um, there's two people that I've had a lot of trouble with getting my case to court. Um, I really hope I don't call them by name. I'm going to go ahead and apologize in case I do, but I'm going to go with title. They are the uh, manager of the Humane Society, 
and the uh, county prosecuting attorney. Um, I, you know, I'm not trying to make this personal, but we apparently have a very deep philosophical difference of opinion on the matter of vicious dogs. Um, I want to touch on like the accountability and the communication that I've had with these men throughout all my dealings. Um, if you got your little packet, I gave you exhibit one, starts to talk about the ordinance with the vicious dogs. Um, I've had three separate incidents on my farm starting in October of livestock being lost. Um, in total, on my farm, I've had 12 goats and a rabbit. That's just my farm. Um, exhibit one is just the definition of the vicious dog. Um, the dog in question fits it. Um, no, no questions asked. Uh, on the second page of it, it says that um, you know, it could be determined that they may be put down based on how vicious they are. Um, exhibit two would be the state law. Um, it says they shall be put down if they meet the requirements. Um, exhibit three would be my witness statement. Uh, basically what happened was I had goats killed in October, did not know what happened to them, just knew that they were all killed, five goats. Took them to the, the vet school, and that's exhibit four. And it, you know, it, it, I found out that it was a dog attack. It said multiple bite wounds, multifocal bite wounds, severe acute subcutaneous hemorrhages and edemas. Basically bit them up so much that they bled underneath the skin and broke, basically broke all of their necks. It's basically what it's, broke, broke multiple bones, multiple bite wounds. So I, then I had a rabbit killed in December. And the only evidence I had of that was huge dog prints. And from talking to the, talking to the person that, that, that did the uh, necropsy on the goats, they told me, you know, you're looking for a big dog. You're looking for a big dog with a big clock. And uh, I found big tracks of that one with the uh, rabbit incident. And then when it came time for the, uh, when it came time in March, I actually caught the dog in the act. The first time when I started having problems, I started, I, I started looking for pictures. I got the dog on, on actual phone camera. I got the dog on trail camera. So that's the yes, dog right yes. there. Yes, I've, I've kind of got a, a flow of how I'm gonna try to do it all. Like I'm gonna go through all the pictures next, I guess. Uh, but yes, that, that is the picture of the dog. Um, I found out it was the dog. I shot the dog. I did not know I even hit the dog, but I did see the dog running away and I shot the dog. So that, that's important for everybody to know that the dog, the dog was hit. Um, I started looking up stuff about the dog because this, uh, the county prosecuting attorney told me that there was, since there was another dog with it, you read in my witness statement, uh, you know, there was another dog with it, a small, from what I've gathered now, female walker hound. She may have weighed 40 to 50 pounds. Um, I'm gonna guess this German Shepherd, he weighed in the neighborhood of 100 pounds. Um, I started looking it up. Uh, the county prosecuting attorney told me that she could not take my case before the uh, before before anything in the county because we didn't know for sure which dog would, did the damage because they were both running away basically when I came out there, when I found the attack. And she said that if we put down the wrong dog, that'd be considered animal cruelty. And the pictures I'm gonna show you guys today of all of my livestock is a little more cruel than one dog being put down humanely, you know, with a shot, in my opinion. But I wanted to look up and see if I, how I could figure out if a German Shepherd was indeed the culprit versus a Walker Hound dog. And when I looked up dogs with the strongest bite force, I found out that a German Shepherd has a stronger bite force than a pit bull. The German mm -hmm. Shepherd, I couldn't even find the Hound dog on the list. And the German Shepherd was way stronger than I thought he was. They also talk about uh, bite intensities. Um, in this same article and there's a level five that says the dog should consider be put down and then there's a level six that says the dog absolutely needs to be put down and that's when they start killing other animals or people and this dog was clearly at a level six um he, he has a bite force of 238 psi that's about seven or eight times as much tire pressure as you get the car and that's enough to break any bone that any of us have like i could not find anything on a hound dog this obviously was the dog i was looking for and I knew the dog I had. I found out later in the day that I'd actually hit the dog, nicked the dog in the face. I did not kill him, and he found his way to the Humane Society. Um, if you look at the pictures I've got, um, the first picture just show the canine's teeth uh, from a vet. You know, I got from the vet about the canines and how they can close, you know, and put pressure down on animals. Um, when I talked to the county prosecuting attorney, um, she. She said since I didn't see the attack, she didn't think I would have a case for one dog versus another. Um, I tried to explain to her that this is apparently a stray dog or no one will ever claim this dog once they found out what he has done. So since he does not have an owner, I do not understand why the dog couldn't be put down and considered vicious. 
And then she asked me if the only reason I wanted him put down is because he was a stray. She just, I guess she just thought I wanted some, something to die. Um, and I, I explained to her that it wasn't because it was a stray, it's because I knew it wasn't a child's dog. I knew it wasn't anybody's family or pet. If no one claim it, it was not collared or anything from the pictures I have anyway, not, not collared. So I'm going to look at a collar on the day that I had an encounter with him. Um, I found out at the end of our conversation that she had just recently put down her German Shepherd of many, many years. So I gathered very quickly that she probably was not going to be too interested in helping me put down a vicious German Shepherd. So uh, the, the next picture is the, the first sighting I had with him. He had a running buddy for a while. Uh, this is the first picture. That's inside my pen where the goats were killed, inside the fence. You can see the gate. Um, I knew who he was because he was a large, large, large German Shepherd, and he had a sandy color. Most German Shepherds are dark, especially around the face. This dog is very sandy colored, and he had what I call a saddleback. Looks like an English saddle sitting on his back. The second picture, picture number four, is from a trail camera on the same fence post from the last one, him coming in and out. At this time, the gate was open because I had no animals. He had killed them all. I had no animals there. So we left the gate open to go through back and forth that I had an open the gate every time, and I caught him on the same camera. Um, pictures five through, I don't know, eight or nine, nine or 10, show what happened the day of March 21st. I showed up to my house after going turkey hunting, and when I, when I walked up, I saw the first goat in the picture laying dead and a walker hound out beyond him. I did not go investigate, I did not go look, I did not go see what's going on. I went straight back in the house and got a gun. And I ran in the house and I ran back out there. And when I came back, I did not see that walker hound again. I saw a large sandy colored German Shepherd that I immediately recognized from my pictures. So I, I attempted to shoot him. Then I went looking for all my goats. Um, I had six goats in the pen at the time. The first one was a little brown one. He didn't make it. The next goat I came across was a black nanny goat in the middle of giving birth. And I did not take enough pictures of this because I did not know I'd ever be in front of you guys today because of this. That dog ripped that infant out of the back of that mother. She was in the middle of having labor. The dog ripped her out of the back of her and then killed the mother too. The second picture, next picture is uh, number seven. It's, uh, it's, of, it's of the baby and you can see all the blood around it. And it's hard to see from some of these pictures, but it had a foot ripped off of it, as in the dog ripped it out. So the next one was a, uh, another goat I had that had been sick. It never even got out of the pasture back to the, where the paddock area was. That they got, and then she wasn't, she didn't even, he didn't even kill her. He just knocked her down and broke her neck and she could not move. So she was still alive when I found her and I had to put her down. So the last picture of, of these, number nine, is all of them together. Um, and the first ghost shows how, the first goat, he'd obviously been chewed up pretty bad because he had all the swelling underneath him and he was very blowed up and all this. The other ones were struck right in the neck. The, uh, the one that given labor just had no ability to fight back and the other one was sick. Um, I had three other goats in the pen and the next picture number 10 is her, the biggest, strongest lead nanny that I had. And as you can tell by that picture, that dog clearly broke her neck. Her neck, it, it, it's, she, when I got to her, she had crawled back to her stall from behind the silo that I had. So I could not see the dog attacking her when I was there. She crawled back to her stall and I don't think she ever stood up again. I stood her up every day, walked around every day, and took care of her. And uh, it's kind of hard to see in the next picture, picture number 11, when I found the bite wound on her, it had become so big and so infected that blow flies had got in there and maggots were in there. And she fought through all this. Picture 12 shows you what happened to her when I cleaned her up. You can clearly see the bite marks on her. It looks like a double barrel shotgun got her. I mean, she, she's been destroyed. Picture 13 shows me trying to take care of this poor goat. She gave birth about two weeks later to twins. One of them survived and I bottle fed it and still do to this day. Um, you can look in that picture and see I'm trying to milk her to keep her from becoming infected because she wasn't being milked. And I was trying to keep her milk to keep her standing up and moving around. I had to tape her neck up and you can see all the wounds and how poor her neck is and how crooked it is. And the back end is tore up, probably from the other dog helping the big dog. Um, picture 14 is my nursery for my baby goat, uh, and so is picture 15. Picture 15 is my 96-year-old grandmother having to take care of my bottle baby goat while I go to work because I couldn't do anything about it. Um, the next couple pictures, uh, I started going around in the neighborhood and trying to find out as much as I could about this dog. Like find an owner, where it came from, who owns it, who knows anything about it. And what I found was 
shocking in the weirdest way was several other people in the community were victims of this dog. These pictures, uh, 16 and 17, with pictures on a trail camera, shows the same two dogs on my camera. 16 and 17 were pictures that show the same dogs about a mile away or so, and they had killed four dogs on that residence that, they, that, that the, the pictures were taken on from that trail camera. And not far from there, a man had 13 rabbits that were killed all, all in one night, and when he came out to, to, to check on all the commotion, this dog left the scene too, the same dog. Sandy Color German Shepherd is on back. He's been a menace in our community. Uh, the last picture shows where I found when he got out of my fence. Uh, it also shows my fence was not a rickety fence that was put up in the 80s. My fence is less than a year old and it was USDA grade. My fence should not have, you know, and if he can get in and out of that, he can get in and out of any other fence. Um, I got zero help from the Humane Society. Um, they, when I called and asked the Humane Society about the dog, and I found out that they actually had it. I did not get, I was not asked, do you know who owns the dog? Do you know where the dog came from? The first question I was asked was, did you shoot it? And my answer was obviously yes, and I told them why. Um, the sheriff, I went and gave my statement to the sheriff's office. The sheriff's office asked me a few weeks later uh, to come back in and said, I'm talking to you on behalf of the Humane Society. Would you allow that dog to be rehabbed and moved out of state? And I quickly answered, absolutely not. This dog has apparently done so much damage to so many animals, he's going to do it somewhere else if he's given the opportunity. And uh, I got my father to go up to the Humane Society to ask about the dog, to try to find out about the dog. They would not tell us anything about the dog. They said it was against their policy. And come to find out later that the dog had already been shipped off to another state. So the dog was shipped off, and didn't, they did not tell us that. They just said that it was under investigation, so therefore we can't tell you anything about it. Basically tried to send me on a goose chase about the dog. Um, I talked to Animal Control in Starkville, and they did not know anything about the dog being vicious, but they did know about the dog because they saw the dog in the Humane Society. And the woman that I spoke to said, yeah, I saw the dog, and the reason I know which dog you're talking about is because it's the biggest German Shepherd I've ever seen. And I said, wow. So uh, the, the last thing that I, or the last kind of point I want to make is uh, when I got to looking, I found out where the manager of the Humane Society lives. And it is literally in the epicenter of all of these attacks. There's one to the north of her. I'm about a mile to the south of her. And there's one to the southeast of her. And that kind of makes me wonder if she didn't know the dog, if she didn't, if she's not the one that took the dog to the vet, if she's not the one that, you know, that, that, that was called in about the dog. But I have not been able to get anybody to communicate with me about anything. We asked them to get their legal people to call us, their board to call us. We have had no communication from them anywhere. Um, I realize that there's a lot of uh, money funded for them, and I would strongly suggest that if they're going to use the money that the county and the taxpayers fund them to apparently give a surgery to and, you know, and neuter, I think, you know, fix, medicate, and pay to ship off stray dogs that are considered vicious without even asking anybody if they're vicious. They have become the justice court, in my opinion, on that they are trying to become the justice court on this. When the when the uh, the ordinance says that the justice court should make that determination, so I don't I think that they, their fund, their funding should certainly be cut or something should be done in the future about this. I would like for something still to be done with my issue. I would still like to get in front. Of, I just want, I would like to get in front of a courtroom with the issue that I have. I think y'all all seen that I have taken a lot of time and effort into this, and I've got plenty of evidence to show that this dog is indeed vicious, and I'd like some resolution from this one and hopefully for those in the future because I've heard it's been shipped out of state. I've heard Wisconsin and I'm not sure how we, our county can justify sending vicious dogs to Wisconsin or they can do it, send vicious dogs back to us. I have no idea. There seems to be no uh, checks and balances on that particular issue with the vicious dogs. So <coughs> that's, uh, I mean, I believe that's basically all that I really had to say. I just, you know, they, the Humane Society is apparently just, they're a no-kill shelter, and I understand that. But when we've got an ordinance that says a vicious dog may be put down, we've got a state statute that says, or a state law, I guess it would be, that says a dog shall be put down. And then we've got common sense that tells us all they need to be put down if they're going to kill and, you know, other livestock and all that other stuff. I have a seven-year-old son who weighs 45 pounds. 
if he was out there with those goats that he plays with all the time and a dog came up, he would think he could stop the, that dog and that dog would have killed him. That dog is vicious and I, I know that a lot of people have had a lot of similar problems. A lot of people in my community have had similar problems with the same dog, not since he's been dealt with, so I know I have the right dog. But I know this is not just a problem for me, not just a problem in my little community, it's a problem for the whole county. And that's the vicious dog ordinance does not seem to be followed because the Humane Society seems to have hijacked it and tried to take control of the whole thing. And I ask that something be done or changed about that. Well, Mr. Simmons, I appreciate you coming before us. You, you shared a lot with us and <clears throat> it says right here that any dog that aggressively attacks and causes severe injury or death, well, it does say to any human, which some wording should be added to any livestock, etc then it uh, shall be immediately confiscated and therefore destroyed in an expedite, you know, in a quick manner, in a humane manner. So that, you know, clearly you have, uh, you know, evidence of broke bones, et cetera, et cetera. So this will be something that we'll look into. Right, uh, you know, as of, as of right now, I know of 12 goats, four dogs, and a fifth one, the fifth dog had nine hundred dollars worth of vet bills and fourteen rabbits that this dog has been accused of killing and by accused I mean leaving the scene of the crime. And so if he's explained, not considered a vicious dog, I'm never gonna get a dog considered vicious either. Did you you explain everything you're telling us? I did my best. I, I have never met have never seen the, the manager of the Humane Society or the County Prosecuting Attorney in person. I've only talked to them on the phone. I could not show what I've showed you guys, that's why I thank you again for letting me come. I've not been able to show anybody this stuff because nobody will listen to me long enough. Well, anyone else from the board? I uh, do want uh, to, to take notice that we do have, he's a former state representative that, that he's got his mask on over there. And, and uh, I think we at least need to acknowledge that he's put his son over here. Um, I will say the estate law, and I'm sure your father knows this as well as anybody, state law says that you can put that dog down if you had gotten to it first. Right. Um, and I don't think that we would be having this conversation had you been able to have done that. No. Um, the, the reality that you're going to face, though, when you're dealing with the Humane Society is they've got a different, they've got a different mandate than you do. And I respect your mandate. I genuinely do. But their mandate is going to be to try to rehabilitate and do something. And as long as that dog had not attacked a human being, which we don't have any proof here that they did, not to suggest that they would that dog wouldn't have. I don't know that I don't know that that, that this particular situation. Uh, I do apologize that you were treated in the manner that you were treated and that you feel the way you feel in this situation. I don't know that we're going to make you happy with this. I'm just being honest. I, that's Me being able to come here and speak will make me sleep a whole lot better tonight. Oh, Being finally listened to about someone about a major problem that I've had for many, many months now will be, I understand that and I appreciate that. I just, I was worried that if they sent the dog up there, he could just do it again because nobody's even been told. If the county animal control for the city of Starkville wasn't told by the humane society that he was considered vicious, I don't see how they, why they would have told anyone else. So, um, that's my, that's my fear and my worry. I'm trying to save the next person down the line. Um, you know, I've been asked by some of these people I've been talking about, is you just want to kill a dog, you just want to kill something. I have a dog. Everybody I know has a dog. You know, it's, it's not about that. It, it's about saving the next person the problems that I've had. Right. Well, Supervisor Montgomery alluded to major changes from wording. Uh, as a body, do, do we have the power to change the ordinances that says humans or livestock. livestock now? The, 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 the county ordinance does talk about livestock. It already does. Uh, there, to, in the in the first section, one, two, and three. Um, well, I was prefer, I was that. referring to the reasons for being able to put the dog down, yeah. and being that the reason that the dog can be put down in section five, uh, subsection two, it says severe injury or death to any human. But again, I agree with you that a dog came and killed my dog, right. which is like my, you know, like one of my family. Right. They killed your rabbits, your goats, you've raised since they were and the, Yeah, the thing is, he killed them for fun. 
He didn't eat any of them. He wasn't hungry because his first bowl was so far. Just kill him. Just kill him. Left him. Didn't even eat the rabbit. Just kill him. Even the baby. 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 This is something that we need to step back and kind of in a larger scope review some of the wording in this ordinance, which I think I had just come on as a supervisor when this ordinance came in. And it doesn't have quite enough teeth right uh, to protect someone like yourself right who is the victim of this right I, from what I gather from the sheriff's department calls about dogs that are problems on whatever uh, scale are yeah. rampant they are constant they're all the they time are. but solutions for these don't seem to be happening and it seems like because the humane society just sends them back out to somewhere else and that's something that we may call them forward some representatives from that and you're more than welcome to come to the meeting and hear I think I'd be open to that what to see it you know so because I want to hear both sides of it and I appreciate you coming today but I think this is something that we'll have to look at like I said step back and take a you know a slower approach to this to see what we can do to improve the ordinance and fix future problems that we're talking about now from happening in the future so Appreciate you coming. You you thought this out. Like I said, this is something. Yeah, I still hope to get a resolution from it. I'm still trying. You know, so I, you don't know where the dog is now. I, all I all I get to hear is, is words secondhand. I have, they will not talk to me directly. I'm I'm working on trying to get a lawyer to be able to to answer my questions about that. They wouldn't answer me any questions. And have you filed this at Justice Court? I'm trying to figure out the best way. The county prosecuting attorney told me I need to do it as a civil suit. Is that right? And uh, that would imply I'd need an owner to sue. And I don't have, I can't figure out the best way to file. The, the best, most straightforward way to file an actual lawsuit is what I would like to try to do. I've been trying to figure that out for a while. I've talked to lawyers about it, and I'm, I'm still working on it. Like no I one to claim it. No one have a dollar. Right, and the county, she also told me, the prosecuting attorney also told me that the county would not pay to ship a dog back to the ship dog. And my response to that was, I will. The issue so, I have with this is, is this this was a, a, a one time incident where a dog happened to end up past and kill the cat or something. This was a repeatedly over and, and, and over. And, and I would like to hear an explanation as to why, because the natural progression of an animal doing this is small humans next. Uh, right. And I would like to hear an explanation as to why this particular dog was not put down, right. it was actually shipped off somewhere else with, with, with this sort of record. I mean, it's, it's, it may be something to add into this ordinance. And I'm just, as I'm thinking out loud, of course, this may be a discussion for another day. But if the, there is evidence that this dog is vicious and it's sent to Humane Society, what have you, then there needs to be a way to notify Absolutely. us, the authorities, to tag, you know what I mean, to tag right. that. Right. They they asked me point blank. They went through the sheriff's office to ask me if I would allow the dog to live, and I said no. And I think everyone can understand why I don't think this dog should be able to live. And they did it anyway. Well, they, the farmer farming. My husband's in the same business. Dogs that do this keep doing it. Right. I mean, that's it's what a, it's that's what the pathologist told. They get told. worse. They get worse, and then they pack dogs with them, and they continue to come because I know that a lot of times. You know, in farming, we ask the owner, hey, keep your dog up. You know, they're killing livestock. Yeah, um, and I think that it progressively gets worse. I'm sorry that you tried to go through the proper steps and it got to this point. Thank you. Um, um, yeah, they, I mean, which, <laughs> I'm not sure which, which train of thought I was going with there, but uh, there, it, when you talk to them, there's a very good chance that they do not know about the extra dogs and all the extra rabbits because no one will listen to me long enough for me to tell them that there's been more attacks. So, and like I said, when I brought to them uh, my 12 goats versus their one dog, they never skipped a beat on me. It was, why do you need to know where this dog is? Why do you need to figure this out? Uh, there was nothing but total defense for the dog. And I don't, like I said, I don't think they told anyone about it. They just, they just shipped him off. So, I guess I would go ahead and say this, Miss Emily, can we add the Humane Society to our next board meeting? Can we Compel them to come and tell their side of the story. I mean, I, 
know that's early to start the agenda for the next meeting, but I'd like to hear. The I have a, uh, you know, based on where, it, based on where the manager lived, I have a strong feeling that she's the one that brought the dog into the Humane Society in the first place. Because as you can see from that picture of the yellow goat, the orange goat, it was raining, it was muddy, it was nasty. And I'm gonna guess this dog gotta be in the neighborhood of 100 pounds. And I found an old man that didn't want to tell me anything, but did tell me that he flagged somebody down in the middle of the road and they picked that dog up and took it to the vet. And if you're telling me, you, you gotta be a good natured citizen to pick up a 100 pound dog with a bullet wound that's completely covered in mud. Uh, I don't think anybody would do that, but I believe somebody that worked for the Humane Society would do that. That is just my personal opinion, but when you live a half a mile away from the dog was picked up, it's a strong possibility that that could have happened. Mr. Simmons, we appreciate you coming today. We're going to certainly look further into this matter, and thank you for putting this all together. Thank you all for letting me speak. Thank you. Thank you. All right, moving right along. Skinner Creek blockage, uh, Mr. Dodds. Ooh, that's me. Come on, Paul. Good morning. Good morning. States, and I had a had a uh, engineer who's kind of consulted with me. Uh, that hey, basically, if water can't get out, it's going to cause more blockage in your neighborhood, which has already has a uh, admitted problem with drainage. Uh, but this is going to cause water basically not be able to get out, which makes which makes it flood more. Uh, Potentially, so and I, I'm sure this also potentially affects other neighborhoods, both you know upstream on Montgomery, potentially even down as far as uh, Mount Olive Road. Uh, so I took these pictures. I walked the creek from Fairway Drive to Courthouse, Courthouse back in January, and obviously we had a lot of rain then. And you see the blockage. And then I had some conversation with uh, our, uh, uh, it's a little, uh, what is this thing? It's Alderman. 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 Yeah. So, and he lived in our subdivision, and then I had some conversations with Saunders Randy and a couple of other engineers. And 
And I think things have been indicated, maybe he and you have spoken some, uh, and that there was gonna, you guys were gonna try to see if you could get you know, money appropriated to maybe clean some of this out. And uh, then the second set of pictures was taken a couple weeks uh, ago, and it was, we had not had any rain for about three weeks. So as you'll see, if you flip through here, the blockage, and it's, all, it's holding water, basically, even though we haven't had any rain. And again, if water can get out, I know uh, this is, I'm talking about Skinner Creek, you know, Hollis Creek, which is over close to my office and runs, you know, follows Louisville. Y'all have had some, you know. That's the one that runs under four miles. Yeah. And I know, of course, y'all are familiar with the flooding that's going on some of the houses right there on the corner of Fort House. And y'all probably know more about that as far as exactly what's caused that. But uh, I don't know a lot about construction or how much money this would take to get some equipment in there to clean it out. But I couldn't think that it would cost that much to clean this creek out. Um, and I'm asking you guys to see uh, if you can help to do that. My subdivision is, is in the city. Uh, the county line, according to the to the uh, uh, you know the city county line, is just south of Dollar General. So part of this is in the county. Part of it's in the city. So I don't know how that works. You guys know all of that as far as who who what, what if y'all can do anything and who would pay for what, but. It needs to, needs to be done. We're coming up on the rainy season, and um, it really needs to be done. So. Well, and I know that um, there has even been a retention fund built at, on the country club side right there somewhere to help with flooding, maybe. Is that right? There's been some discussion on that. Like, okay. Yeah. And they dug out their side. Right. But um, so this is my question. You know, when we decided to go with the Tom Bigby Waterway Association, this was just to help with this problem. And we know it's a problem. Can we get in creeks? Can the county go down the creeks and clean them up? Yeah, we go through your regular process. We are allowed, as long as we come to a determination that it's health, safety, and welfare of our citizens and it affects, which is not hard to prove that this affects county roads and what have you, whatever it does. With that, and that includes, uh, Frankly, it includes all of our waterways, but, but you still have to get a DEQ uh, Department of Environmental Quality has to approve what you're doing. Um, one of the things that I, that we're going to have to look at, because this is going to become a problem for us over the next few years, especially with the development we've gotten, we're going to have to figure out, because whatever happens in the city is going to affect the county. Whatever happens in the county is going to end up affecting the city, depending on which side of the community we're on. We don't come up with a plan. We're going to dump more water on them, or vice versa. They're going to dump more water on us. We've got several, especially South Montgomery. I've, I've talked to two or three different people this the last two or three weeks. There is flooding. I'm trying to remember all of the, the one of the subdivisions. So there's flooding in Timber Cove that's that's starting to become a little problem, and it may be attached to this same creek we're talking about. I don't know if it is, but it may be. Yes, sir. My presentation is going to piggyback right on this one, so I don't know. His I, policy. I'm not sure. Okay, so there, there may be some connectors all. Oh, yeah, right, yeah there. Absolutely. It's the same. Yeah. You're going to get a. Mine's a little more detailed about what's going on and why. So I, you know, with a discussion at the end of mine would be really fits right in with this. Well, I'll be right. it for a moment. But I don't mean to change your so, so no, I just, just, no just at least get to this area, yes. you know, and get us to through Four House Road. What what do we have to do? You you're still get a DQ permit to, to, to deal with it, but we have to this board has to determine whether it affects the health, safety, welfare and it attaches or affects our road system in some way, shape, or form. So we can, but the, the, the question's going to be, 
and I hate to say this, it always comes down to this, budgetarily, this, once you start cleaning, where do you stop? Well, here's the thing. I did, they reached out to me, some of the landowners, and uh, they agreed if we, if in the event we could clean the ditch out, that we could leave the material there. Because that would, and in essence, they're going to develop long term this property. So that would almost be a fire authority material for them when they do clear it off. down on the cost. It would cut down the cost, the hallways, et cetera, like that. So we have blessings from the landowners. Yeah, um, we things. just have the DEQ satisfaction. Is that something at this point? Mr. Bag, can you look at these pictures? Do you mind? Is that but, something we can put a piece of equipment in these pretty swept dry? Uh, I think so. Um, one of the landowners would, would walk the property with Either one of us or both of us or whatever. Um, and, and I asked them that. And the track code go down in there. And they said, yes, there would be a bank that you could keep it on. But um, I guess a couple of things is, you know, we got into the Tom Bigby waterway. Uh, and this is a, my beginning, you know, argument was that we would be faced with things like this, quite honestly, they are not going to be able to get to in time to prevent the near future flooding, damage, etc. So that was my reasoning for not voting to get into it, because I knew these would, would be something that we would have to encounter. But quite honestly, the county, we didn't do any of this. This is something that the city and a developer develop and then downstream, upstream of this cause and effect. And so we're the ones now that will have to go in there and do this. But I want to see the city and the county as well keep growing. Um, I guess we need to grow find out from the DEQ what we need to do to satisfy their requirements as quickly as possible. And then of course, get with Mr. Baggett, the landowners, see what can be done. How, how long of a stretch is this, Mr. Dodge, that you're talking about? In other words, this whole section right here is- That's, that's just from Fairway Drive uh, down to Florida House, house which is about- It's probably it's, yardage wise. What it's, not, it's not a mile. Not what it's not a mile. It's probably this. It's a little under a mile. mile right yeah. under a mile, I would think. That, I was thinking maybe a quarter to a half a mile. It's probably. Uh, yeah, I think it's a good half a mile. Uh, of course, when you're walking through the woods, that's something you get. Yeah, it, it, yeah. It seems a little longer. Uh, one thing, other thing that I did notice, and this isn't, but I, I think it's something y'all need to be to think about as development continues. Like when I walked out in January, where Dollar General you know where they develop you can see where there's some additional trees so as people develop there needs to be some sort of protocol not to have them push those trees into ditches into ditches into the creeks and some of that you know <laughs> but there is some evidence there's some yeah okay well, what kind of problem is this creating because they're flooding out homes or yeah, it's quite nice. What people cannot get home, because I have a lot of places in my district that people can't get home. Yeah. So mm -hmm. there's a creek problem, right. not just this problem, but there's a creek problem all over Arkansas County right. that needs to be dealt with. Right. And that's the reason why I believe we uh, entered into an agreement with. Tom Big B Waterway Management District to be able to handle all of the creek problems in Octavar County. And look like this one is already paying for this yearly to happen. I, I want to applause those individuals on the board that did vote for the ongoing relationship with Tom Big B Waterway Management District 
And the only thing they require of us is to make a list of those creeks who we deem as priority creeks and present those, those that list to them. Yes, when, when, I, um, when we reached out this last week or week before to the Tom Dixie Water Way Association, it appeared that it was going to be a longer process than I thought it was going to be, uh, possibly to get started. And so that's the reason I'm glad you brought this to the board. Um, I was one of the no votes on that because I felt like that we needed to address the problem immediately and I was scared that this is going to be something where it would take years to get to a creek and clean it out. So I think that we need to do two things. We need to um, get with the environmental and see what this is, what the regulations are on this and then follow back up again with the Tom Bigby Water Association and see um, how long it's going to be. They were saying that we had not finished, completed some type of paperwork we had to complete. But I mean, when the president was, we reached out to the president, uh, that was what he said. So let, let's try to get some resolution before next board meeting, can we? Um, you want to, let's do some official, some board orders too. I would like to. Let's, uh, I'm thinking of two. Is one, let's see what the DEQ requires the county. Um, before we can get into this creek and other creeks like it because this problem is not as to what supervisor williams is talking about it's not just this creek sure. yeah, it's not sunset it has a creek that comes out the back of it that when it when beavers or anything like that get into it it floods the whole neighborhood um but I, i've seen in country club states what it looks like when it, when it floods and and it does go over courthouse on both areas, yes. on, on that side and on the Hollis Creek side. But you can see the water so line floods, on the side it of the house. It floods both sides of the road and runs up to almost up to Sunnyland. And Sunnyland's on a high area, you know, yeah. they're on a hill. Yeah. But it floods across courthouse in both locations because both of those creeks, there's so much development in the city limits, you know, and it's running faster, I believe, because of the trees and things like that. Um, I'd like to also get Mr. Baggett, um to to figure what it would cost maybe just to dig it out, dig it out and, and bring that back to the board. And then I don't know, can four year road money be used? If there if there doesn't appear to be money in the operational budget? Pay for that? The four year road plan money? Yeah. Yeah. Well I mean if it if it's uh if it's something where you know, it doesn't look like it's, but if it's not gonna cost, if, if Mr. Baggett comes back and says, this is gonna be the, the cost and we can afford it, I'm just asking for other options because sometimes that seems to be a stopping point is the money. I'm listening at, 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 at this conversation and I, I certainly appreciate y'all looking for help. Uh, Supervisor Williams alluded to it. I'm sitting there thinking right now in my district, there's two creeks that are a lot of creeks. Exact same yeah, thing. Uh, yeah. I've got residents that can't get out of their driveway. Yeah, I got to put the water get, get up. Uh, and, and and we need to attack it whichever way we possibly can. I, I I think what we heard when we started talking about this, we've got to identify a scope of work from beginning to the end and let the EQ review that scope of work and then tell us what's got to be done uh, to, to, to to stay within the guidelines. That was, that was one of the things. And I guess a, another thing is is uh, you got to be mindful of, of starting to pull out county forces off of other major projects that we've got going, uh, road building and stuff like that. Uh, and I think we do need to work with, our, with, with the Tom Bigby uh, water district. And, and, and let them sort of review, take a look at the, the, the process he said was that each supervisor identify something in their district and then go review it and then the board would have to make a decision as to which one from most important to least important. So I, I think there are just several different things that we, do, we need to look at, but I can say this, these pictures are very similar to all of our districts uh, around the county. So. 
So I, I think if, if we get started down this road, we might as well just go ahead and start doing them all. Um, but wouldn't it be better to get, is Mr. Pritchard capable of doing a, an analysis of a hydrological study for the entire county, or do we need to pursue someone else who has those capabilities? Because this is a major situation around the entire city and county. Maybe we need to seek out someone who has that expertise to come in and do that evaluation throughout the entire county and have to expend county dollars to understand what kind of problem we got and then have to expend county dollars to address the problem. Maybe borrow some long-term money somewhere, 30 or 40 year money, and address all these issues. Well, well what we're doing I do know this, that Mr. Kenner, Kenner, who is the, David Kenner, he, he's the president of the Tom Bigby Water, um, that was one of the things he's, they initially wanted to do, to show how the water moves through the county, what direction, what, you know, and uh, that would be uh, the first kind of master plan of it. Um, but, the, you know, this, this is an example, one example of something that can't really wait, you know what I mean? But I mean, we've got these problems throughout our county. Well, but if you can't wait, what you can do, you can, as long as you don't take any trees off the bank, if something is already there, I don't think you have a problem with, with yeah. getting it out. But you don't need to leave it there. It needs to be hauled off and removed. Right. Because, because the next big storm yeah. comes by, it's going to run through yeah. 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 You don't want to dig, get that stuff out of there and leave it there. You need to haul that stuff off. What are we going <laughs> to put it behind like a bank? You, know, you need to remove it, take it off the scene. Well, in this particular oh, you area, it's a flat, it, or flat or development. Or they might even let us reburn it. That's a deep question in and of itself. They're not going to let us burn it. Okay. But as long as you don't change the structure of the creek, which is that's really what needs to happen in order to correct it, yeah. you need to go in and really build the creek. That's but if it's in the, the creek, in other words, you see these trees on the very front, right. we can pull those out. Yeah, I don't see a, I don't see anything wrong with us going in there in, in the water. In that water, just get it out. But I don't think you need to leave it. I think you, you need to remove it away from the uh, from the work site. So it won't be a problem. And I think the county should should work simultaneously with, with the Tom Bigby, at, at, even as far as advice. And on, cause they do this all the time. They, they know exactly what DEQ requires and how to do it. And I think they could advise us on some of that stuff along with you reaching out to DEQ. And I think it'll help speed up the process on whichever direction you want to try to go with this. I, I think something we, we should be mindful of is Tom Bigby Waterway Management District already have that kind of communication with DEQ. So the type of permission that we have to give, they don't have to give. They already got approval from DEQ to be able to work on, on these creeks. So we should be making a list, making a list of those creeks that we feel that are in need of repair. And let Tom Bigby Waterway Management District earn their money since we have already entered into a payment agreement, a payment agreement with them. I think we should give them an opportunity. Yes, it is going to take time. It's going to take time, but it's been going on for years. And now we have a, an idea on how to come up with a solution. So I think we need to let that solution take its normal course by presenting the name of the creeks to Tom Digby Waterway Management District and say these are the creeks that we want you to work on and let, let them earn their money. And this will be resolved. And at the same time, make sure we're working with these developers so that they don't create any further problems. I mean, well, there are some of the That was the back end of the conversation that I was going to say, Supervisor Howard, is these developers come in and develop. I'd like for them to look at cause and effect. Right. And this is nothing that the county did. We are, this is put in our lap, in essence, from that development. And I'm glad for the development, but, you know, we didn't create this problem. You know, when I was a young, young man, kid almost, you know, I hate to say it, a lot of the 
places that are getting built on, quite honestly, were swamp lands, you know, because a lot of the high ground, the better ground built on are never going to be sold. So to that point, there needs to be some thought as to what you're doing and what it's going to cost in the back end. And this is an example of that, is that that was built in a bottom. Um, well, Mr. President, what do we have? We're going to have to have planning and zoning. And we are. Well, and I know we've been running from it for years, but the time has come down, we're going to have to have that type of stuff. Out of the camp. But we yeah. need to have some rain on that, that if someone's building a, a barn, that you're not going to have to have duplicate copies and go to some committee to tell you what color paint you need to put on it. I mean, I, that's the fear of mine. Is that there are reasons people live in cities? There are reasons that people live in the camp. Well, we develop these guidelines. Why not just add that in there? I mean, if I, if our county engineers to go out and inspect before and after that they they followed the guidelines, why wouldn't he? Why wouldn't why would, couldn't we add that to the guidelines to make sure that, that, that there's no blockage, additional blockage of a waterway? Yeah, that's a good point. I mean, that's right. Without well, going, we do have a site development plan. Yeah, that that should answer address whether or not. You're this building in a flood in a flood zone. It does. It does. It just predates that. that. Whether it's building in a flood zone or not, it does not address whether or not they create in a flood zone. Correct. Right. And so but that's the problem. Content. And our and our site development permit is not set up to go back out and re-inspect it unless they're building in a flood zone. Right. So, so we should test that initially. We would sure. catch it initially if they were building in the flood zone, but our, we're not detailed enough where we're going back out and doing uh, follow-up inspection. Follow-up. We're not doing that. Follow you just have to go with what uh, Supervisor Trainer said with building and zoning. The, the problem we're running into, y'all, though, is not just the fact of whether or not you're building into a flood zone. It's the more water you dump into that creek bed, the more water you're going to get everywhere. That's, you know, I mean, I hate to say it like this, but that's the big issue. You're redefining the buffer. Correct. You're redefining where that flood zone is Completely, completely redefining. We're, we're going to, within the next 15 to 20 years, with the development that we got, especially up top down your way yeah. and down South Montgomery, down y'all's way. 25. Down 25. All of these spots are going to have a major problem. And if we don't get in front of it now, we are going to have, it's just going to get worse and worse and worse. Um, I've just, I've seen more flooding issues in the past five years than in any time in my lifetime. And it's, I honestly don't think it's going to get better. I think if the city and this county doesn't get together on a game plan on this and get ahead of it, because honestly, I don't know that it isn't too late. I don't know that we've not already had enough of this. Now, that doesn't mean we can't fix some of it. It just means that I think that we're already seeing some of the, the ramifications. I, I think so the plan of action is? The plan of action is to get Mr. Baggett to go look at this. Let's check with the DEQ to see what requirements are necessary from our end. And then also, to Supervisor Williams' point, let's give the Tom Bigby Water District their chance to earn their money and alleviate a problem, a direct problem. Um, this is just Exhibit A. But like, like Supervisor Williams said, get a list in your head. I've got three that I know of in my district that we need to get. I wouldn't mind calling Mr. Kendrick to come to our maybe our next meeting or two. Is Mr. Dodge more than welcome to come and hear that discussion to uh, to see what direction that they can take um, in helping us alleviate problems like this, but specifically this problem. So, so, so to each district then go ahead and get this. Yeah, I'll have I'll have a list uh, next uh, meeting. I can too. Uh, I mean, which, which the top two will be the two that we're addressing right now. Right, and, and they so, affect both of our districts. Yeah. Well, but we need an official board order to let's maybe task Rob, Ms. Emily, um, as a board to see from the DEQ side what do we need to do as a county to proceed on this and how to proceed. 
So that's my motion. Okay, so I'm, I, I want to add uh, sign, sign three okay. on, on this one. So and I will add, I, I guess let's go on, let's form a list if we want to. So you've got Skinner Creek, Sun Creek, uh, I would assume Hollis. Hollis Creek. Hollis Creek. That's the one thing, you know, he's already come to us about that. And Tobacco Juice Creek. Sorry for the name, but that's the name. <laughs> but, uh, and it looks like Tobacco Juice. But it's the one that comes out the back of Sunset flood sunset floods that quite honestly it, it gets into that lagoon right there and it mixes you know that it's uh, I won't get into that um, and then also on Longview Aiton through that bottle but this is for Mr. Kenner and any other but other want to add something then by all means do so I like this one for not for the I like for well, we're, I, was I'm, I'm initially wanting to, I was initially wanting to say, and I thought it would be best to two board orders. The first board order was to task Robin or Miss Emily or and or to get with the DEQ, see what we need to do as a county to proceed on situations like this. And then we can do a second board order to add those creeks. Okay, I'm, I'm just, I was just trying to understand. I thought you all were, were, were putting together a board order to instruct Mr. Baggett to proceed immediately with going to assess these. And if so, I wanted to have one in with you. Yeah, I mean, what I'm, what I'm getting at. We can. We can do that. But I guess my first board order was find out from our end what we need to have for the EQ on generically any creek to be able to proceed. Because we're going to be faced, and I know there's going to be a long turn on what the Tom Bigby Water District does, and they'll do some good. But we have problems that have been problems for years, but then you're going to have problems like this that need to be handled quite honestly quicker than they can handle it. Maybe a small job, maybe something that's 200 yards long that we can clean out. So I'm just trying to expediate this because what we're hearing from the Tom Bigby is that it's going to be a long process on this. Well, I, that, and maybe so, maybe maybe he has since told me all that, but when he first came, he, he didn't seem to relay that type of message that it was going to be a huge, long process to this. Now, I don't know what he told you all, uh, but, but I think it'll be good to get him back. Yeah. And I mean, board meeting and we could to be fair, yeah, let's get him back to our stuff. next board meeting and, and hash that out. I mean, I, I'm just looking for solutions here. Yeah. Yeah. You know, um, so however we word the board order, order or orders, I don't I don't care. Why just trying to get some help. Why don't we do a board order to to for us to contact DQ to see what we got to do go on on clean out creek and then uh I will have David come to the next board meeting and see what what we need to do, get them so they can start cleaning out creek. So I made the motion to see what we needed as a county to get together for the DEQ to be able to dig out creeks uh, in this in the county. That was my motion. We're gonna so, dig them out and we Okay. Moved Second by Supervisor Howard. All those in favor. Right, right. She said remove the dirt, the dirt right. or dig them out because that's no. that would be two different. Oh, okay. Yeah, we dig them Both out. Ways. Why are you talking to me? Yeah, yeah, I mean, what, what can we do? What can't we do? Yeah. Okay, so, I mean, second. Right. second by Howard. Okay. And that doesn't mean that we're going to do anything. That mean that we no, that's do. just asking what do we need to do as a county to be able to dig creek out? What are our parameters? Uh, I, I feel like we need to move slow with good county forces out on creek banks. And that's really not, I don't believe what our county personnel need to be doing. And to that point, cleaning it out yeah, creek. I talked with Mr. Dodds and said just that, that we really aren't, this is not our specialty. In other words, we're not really set up as a county, unfortunately, 
because of limited manpower, limited equipment, and limited experience to be able to do things like this. And I told you that when I talked to you on the phone, that this isn't in our purview. You know, this isn't because of, we're here to build the roads, the bridges, but of course we do want to keep the creeks from flooding. But that is something that is, it's a reach for us as a county and our personnel and our equipment. I mean, we have a traffic, and that's for building new roads, that's for everything. Mr. President, would it be appropriate during this research, some of this is research, would it be appropriate for us to reach out to some of our um, people that, that do that sort of work and just find out what this would cost? For, for certain. I mean, that may be a... And it could be something that the company has that per that permit from the DQ in their right. pocket right. as they're doing it. So, to Supervisor Williams' point, this isn't in our in our wheelhouse per se. So, but we want to help anywhere we possibly can. And and I, I you know I, I think I, I think also in, in the meantime, Supervisor Train alluded to this hydraulic study because what we don't want to do. Is, is is treat just 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 we, we see we see a blockage right here right. and we decide well we yeah. need to go get the trees out yeah. from, from from right here and then the real issue is, is way on yeah. down to where this really you know we so if we don't see it anymore but the real issue is way on downstream somewhere and and I think if we do a complete hydraulic study it will show us, well, you know, I think if you would go down here first and do this, this will start to help alleviate some problems back up this way. But I, I think we just need to attack this thing in, in all the directions that we possibly can. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, Mr. Baggett. Uh, and and uh, sticking to the DEQ, it's really very important how you word it. So if you want to say clean out, if you want to say dig out, say dig out this bridge. To clean out and just clean it out. If you, if you even mention the word dredging, it's going to just no. We're just it's terrible. We have we've been just cleaning out. So, so, so we need to remove debris. Remove debris, right? Because you're not supposed to be digging in it. Well, dredging is going to be a different whole four plants and everything. Because the plants will have to make it worse. Well, and like the supervisor Howard would say, we dig this out. Where we sit, where we send them. Yeah. So there's a lot of things to be considered and I understand your plight if you're wanting this alleviated. But we have a it's almost like a Rubik's cube that you've got to make everything line up if we legally can do this. Right. So, but again, we're here to do whatever we can do to help and as quickly as possible. Well, I appreciate that. I appreciate your consideration. And I'm assuming some of these roads in the county and city that have blockages, if those roads themselves are staying in portions underwater, then that's probably going to increase your maintenance cost on those roads, is it not? Well, we have ditches and things like that that will fill up. I've got a place that, especially in Longview Aston, that, yeah, it goes across the, it goes across the road. Badly. Tend to watch out and you have yeah. to and spend so more money on the road. We've had to do some, especially on the road. This isn't a new issue. We've had issues like this county wide. So, yeah. Yeah. so, yeah, it's a problem that causes maintenance issues that we could talk about all day long. But, but uh, certainly we want to help as much as possible. But uh, we need to check with the DQ first to get uh, Mr. Kennard over here. And then maybe then we can give him the list that we were talking about. If that's okay. Yeah, I just that. think we need to get a plan of action yeah. and, and a really. But we need to get a time frame yeah, too. And yeah. it's tough to hammer down a time frame with this, with, with Tom Bigby, because it is such a big district that they're dealing with. I think it's now we're the 23rd county in it. We have to get our board members on there that's going to represent us. That's one thing that we've we got to see to. where our application process is at this time, too. Well, 
last time that I know is when they that resolution, I sent it to him and he was supposed to contact me to let me know what you need to do. That'll be part of the conversation, I'm sure, when he comes back uh, to our next meeting. Is what we're going to ask him to do. So. Thank you. Thank you for your time. We did we motion and second it to um, for the DQ. We're gonna we're gonna table the rest of the conversation about specific creeks for when Mr. Kenner gets here. And uh, of course we'll let him know on that then. Yeah. It's just to, to see what we can and can't do for the DQ. Uh, Mr. President, uh, we think that Mr. Summers and Mr. Dobbs would be attending those meetings to kind of get an update on where we are and where we're going. That'd be fine. Yeah, our next meeting will be, what is that, the 13th? It'll be our next meeting, I think, next next week. Are we going to make that a full board meeting or just a budget hearing? I said full board, board meeting. Board meeting. Yeah. We'll do our uh, recess meeting on the 14th, so that would be next Monday, less than a week from now. And uh, don't know, we'll have to reach out to uh, see if the director, Mr. Kennedy, can be here. Okay. But he's from this area. He's, you know, so I would imagine he would be here. Huh? Afternoon, 5.30. Nine o'clock. Nine o'clock. Nine. Yeah, because yeah, we got the, we got to approve our budget. All right. Um, moving on from Mr. Dodge to the Hollis Creek. Mr. Wagner. 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 I thought it was Wagner. I was like, what is Wagner? I think so. <laughs> I have to apologize for writing this out. I wanted to, as I started thinking about it, it more and more stuff came on, so I figured I'd better. At any rate, uh, I want to thank you all for giving me the opportunity to come before you. I, I initially went to the feds, and the feds, act, and I was quite surprised, referred me to you all. And, it, and this has been a very good discussion. So I'm Terry Wagner. Uh, I live on Cross Creek Road. That's off of Southridge. And I've been there for almost 30 years. I've lived in Sudville for 35 years. Uh, prior to my retirement, I worked for USDA, Agricultural Research Service, and U.S. Forest Service conducting research. And I'm here to discuss, once again, flooding on Alice Creek, south of town. To the best of uh, best uh, way to proceed here, I think, is to, to better understand the problem is to give you some background on Hollis Creek. Uh, the creek originates in Starkville near the high school, and it travels south from there, paralleling South Montgomery to the west. And along the way, it crosses Academy Road, Four House Road, South Ridge, Mount Olive, and it proceeds on south from there. Uh, emptying into the Noxaby, Skinner Creek empties into Hollis, Hollis empties into the Noxaby on the, on the wildlife refuge. The creek is channeled uh, for about the first five miles south of town. And like a four lane highway, the channeling enables the creek to, to move large volumes of water quickly. And many of our southern creeks. Uh, were channeled in the 18 and early 1900s in agricultural areas. Essentially, all the creeks around here were channeled as they traveled through agricultural areas. And this enabled them to minimize flooding, uh, erosion, and to empty fields quickly in the springtime. And Hollis is one of these creeks. At this point, before proceeding, uh, there's a hint, there's a there's a figure in the, on the back of your, your handout. Uh, I want to spend a minute because we're going to be referring to that. Uh, so stop here and, and spend a time a minute with that handout. Uh, this is an official survey showing the last three properties on the west side of Cross Creek Road, and for perspective. This area lies midway between Southridge Road to the north and Mount Olive Road to the south. If you hold the paper upright so you can read the 
writing on it. My house, the Wagner house, sits on the right side and the creek snakes along the left side. And my neighbor, Dr. Bushby, who's sitting right beside me, his property is on my north and another property is north of him. Those are the three properties. The green line delineates the hardwood bottom on the left of it and a ridge on the right of it. So my house sits up on the ridge overlooking the bottom. And the, the hardwood bottom is, is essentially at the same level as the creek. <clears throat> so let's look for a second at the creek on the left of the page. And what you'll see is a whole bunch of left and right turns in the channel, eight of them to be exact. The straight line channeling stops just off the page to the north, just off the top of the page to the north. So six of those eight turns are about 90 degrees and they occur over 300 yard sections of, uh, of creek. That's six right angle turns in a 300 yard section immediately following five miles of four lane highway. You should begin to see the problem. For most of the past 30 years that I've lived on Hollis Creek, the aggressive meandering has not been much of a problem. The creek would get out of its banks and flood the hardwood bottom up to the ridge during the wet times of the year, maybe once or twice a year. Some years it wouldn't flood at all. But things have changed dramatically in the last few years. The creek is now getting out of its banks numerous times a year, like five, six, seven times a year, flooding not just our section of creek and that to the south, but also backing up further north. So what's going on? What's the problem? First, there's been a marked increase in development in South Starkville along the Hollis Creek watershed. And we can see this right now uh, along South Montgomery, just north of Academy Road. It's about a 10 acre, what out, 10, 15 acre section uh, where new homes are being developed right in the watershed. And also farther south on South Montgomery along Adelaide. And I was just mentioned two of of many. This development has increased the volume of water as runoff into the creek and it will certainly continue into the future as Starkville grows. Number two, there's also been a marked increase in the amount of rainfall and rainfall events in the last few years. And we expect this will continue as well as the so we're seeing heavier rainfall and increased runoff along the watershed that's exceeding the carrying capacity of the creek when it encounters the right angle bends in the channel. The first five miles of creek collects a large volume of water and moves it downstream quickly just as it's designed to do, only to crash into six right angle bends. That's not good, but it's not, it's not all. Moving water can be a very powerful and destructive force. I think we're all aware of that. We've been told not to cross moving water across the highway for good reason. When the large volumes of water hits the bends in the channel, it has nowhere to go but out. It can't go down because the creek bed is already at bedrock. Creek is literally busting out of its seams along these meanders. It's, it's getting wider all along this section of channel, I mean markedly wider. It's also carrying more and more silt and sand, literally sandblast on the sides of the creek. Sand is washing out of the creek when it floods, something I've never seen before and I've lived there for 30 years. More and more trees are falling along and into the creek. We've already discussed that. And that further slows the water. The 
slow water is pushing back on incoming water, causing greater flooding farther north, and the water pushed out of the creek floods low-lying areas farther south. And as if this wasn't enough, the creek is now changing direction where it meets the first set of 90-degree turns, about 50 yards behind Dr. Bushby's house. This can be seen on a handout in blue. The first left-hand turn moving south is moving, is slowing the water market. The second right-hand turn is only 30 yards away. At this point, the force of the water is pushing over the bank, cutting a new channel as it goes. In the past couple years, this area has become the primary, not the only, but the primary outlet for moving into the bottom. It's also pushing out of the bottom at these other right-hand hand turns. But the first two right-hand turns are imagined you know, that's the car accident. So the water's flowing out of this breach is also carrying large volumes of sand that's clogging an existing slough that runs through the bottom. So this is our primary concern right now, stopping the creek from cutting a new channel that's headed in exactly the wrong direction, perpendicular to the channel's general southern flow. In summary, <clears throat> we've discussed the primary reasons for flooding our Longhouse Creek and these other creeks, and how the flooding is affecting more and more residents along the waterway. There's one more thing, one more reason why we need to keep the water in its banks. About 200 yards south of my southern property line lies a large sewage lagoon smack dab in the middle of the bottom right on Hollis Creek. When the, when the lagoon was built in the late 90s, I think it was the late 90s, flooding was much less of a problem into the bottom. And now, well, the earth and the levees are sitting in water for longer and longer periods of time. Remember Hollis Creek emptied into the National Wildlife Refuge. So what actions are we hoping for? And by we, I mean, I referred myself to Dr. Bushby. First, we're hoping to stop the creek from changing direction in Dr. Bushby's backyard, perhaps using riprap and concrete, I don't know. The area has easy access, so that's not an issue. Given the driest months of the year right now, time is of the essence. If we miss the opportunity to stop the redirection at its genesis, it will be much more difficult and expensive to fix in the future. Second, it's also important to keep the channel free of debris, especially at the Mount Olive Bridge. All of these roadways are elevated. Mount Olive is elevated as it crosses the creek. And these elevated roadways will act as a levee if the bridge gets clogged and that'll flood back north and flood homes big time. And lastly, we hope that the board will develop what you've been talking about in great discussion, a long-term strategy for permanently resolving the negative changes to this creek and others. This, in, our, in this case, this will probably require additional channel, uh, channeling. The plan should include partnership with state and federal agency agencies to, do, to generate funds as well as expertise. You know, I, I would mention to the board last comment that if you get a couple topo maps for surrounding areas from around Starkville and look at them, it's very clear on these topo maps, which were made a hundred years ago. It's incredible. It's very easy to look at a topo map and see where the channelings on these creeks have occurred. 
if you if you look on a topo map at this particular area right here, you'll see the straight line channeling out of Sarkville coming south. You'll see this small check stretch of meandering uh, that we've been discussing here. Then you'll see some more channeling south of Mount Olive Road, and then some more and some more meandering. And you can see where the agricultural areas were. And these channels were put there for a reason to get rid of water quickly, and, and it works. And it's, it's a real problem when the water slams into debris, especially around bridges, or it slams into these small areas of meanders. It backs it right up. I mean, we the, the channeling was designed to get rid of the water, and it works great. But it doesn't work great when it hits. When it's, it's, it's just think of a think of an interstate highway and a car accident. We all know. We've all been there, backed up five miles because whatever, just right, next to nothing, it backs it up. Well, that's exactly what's going on with our creeks around here and everywhere else for that matter. So I, I commend the board. I want to thank you all for for listening to these kind of comments. This will, and as has been mentioned, this will definitely is going to increase. You're going to be hearing more and more about this. I don't know whose responsibility it is, but it's going to have to be not just at the local level. This is going to have to be at the state and maybe federal level. The soil, the soil Conservation Service used to, I mean, they were the ones doing a lot of these channeling, and they were the ones that you could go to, and uh, apparently they're not doing it. Thank, thank you all for no, thank, thank you. Very detailed. Thank you. All this creek is a problem. It's a problem because so many other creeks dump over into Hollis <coughs> Creek on its way to trying to make it to Knoxville, to the Knoxville River. And in the block of, block of bottom, it's where all of this water, a lot of this water stops in the block of bottom because there's a lot of trees that are falling over into, mm -hmm. over into that creek in the block of bottom. So I say that to say, certainly the hottest creek needs to be put on our, on my list, on my list as a creek that needs to be dealt with by Tom Bigley Waterway Management District. Thank you, Mr. Wagner, certainly, certainly detailed. And, and, and he brought to our attention a lot of the issues that, that's, that's taking place, some that's controllable, some that's uncontrollable with the amount of rainfall. And, and as we continue to build more paved roads, the water has to go somewhere. Uh, and, and as we continue to upgrade our drainage on the road, that actually sends more water, you know, with, with timber being cut. Nowadays, that creates a problem. It's it's a problem that that uh, Tiverhall County, I don't think, will be able to jump in with our local forces and handle. But it's a problem that we need to create a comprehensive drainage plan, start to work on this, and try to get on top of it. And supervisor trainer alluded to it. You know, it takes money to get to that point. But once you get to that point. You've got that comprehensive plan in place. It, it'll, it'll help you long term. Um, so it, it's it, it may be issue. It, it, it may be issue. We got we got to continue to work as hard as we can on this. I think this is a, you know, another example that we'll get our road manager to go look at. Mr. Kenner come for us. Put this on there. Him to you know, task him to go see what could be done from the Tom Bigby Water Association. So, um, like I said, these problems are more and more as we develop more and more. But this is something that he's seen begin over the last few years, over the last five, you said five to ten years. So, you've been 35 years or 30 years at this location. And he's begun to see it do things that it's not done uh, until as of late. So uh, this is something. This is Exhibit B. You know that we can. Um, 
part of you know part of the issue for landowners like myself, you know, if a if a fallen tree is in the creek behind my house, it's stopping water. I'm going to get a chainsaw and I'm going to walk there and cut it up. But you know, like this other issue where you got to redirection. You know, landowners, including myself, don't know what, you know, the, the feds regulate, well, we all, we, you know, these things are regulated so much now, starting right at the local level, right on up. And, you know, landowners don't know what they can do without essentially violating the law. You know, Dr. Bush, me and I go in the back and say, you know, well, we're not going to get anybody to do this for this one you know once this creek redirects itself and it cuts down the bedrock that's a ball game you, you got big problems then because it's it's now coming out of the banks right there because it's cut enough if i've got pictures of it it's easy to see right behind the house you know but so i mean the so landowner is doing anything without getting in trouble and who do you talk to to find out what you can do and what you can't do? Because it, all these things are regulated now. Well, that's why we were asking on a county level, you know, to the DQ, be it a state or a federal guideline, we don't want to, on a county level, uh, neglect to, to find out. So we're in, we're in the same boat, in <laughs> essence, that you are to see what within legal purview what we can do. Yeah, I was just amazed when the feds, and I can't, I gotta go back and look at my notes to see who, what, what agency I talked to, but this would, I'm thinking, what are they referring me to the Board of Supervisors for? I mean, but, you know, that ain't, that ain't good either when the feds are, you know, have stepped back and say, well, no, 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 I'm not doing anything. But, and then, you, you know, EPA, of course, you know, got a puddle in your back. Has the city of Starkville been given notification of some of these problems? Do, do, I'm, I'm assuming this is in the city limits as well. I'm not trying to. So this yeah, is I have. This is the, no, this is probably miles joint, out. Okay. The joint yeah. agreement with. And if you remember last yeah. year, the Cadman Road flooded okay. for one of the first times that I had ever seen a flood. Um, the water was over Academy Road, and that's all Hollis Creek. And of course, you get that's a lot. Courthouse Road floods. You get in Supervisor Williams. Um, it's the trailer park at the end of South Montgomery stays underwater when it rains. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Yeah. it is an issue. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it goes over Mount Olive Road. Yeah. So I think this will be something that we also, you know, when the, when the Tom Bigby, when their rep comes to us, I believe it'll be Mr. Kennedy. Um, well, let me, let me ask, and I don't mean to be presumptive about what the board is going to discuss or do, uh, but you know, you, this, 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 as, as I mentioned, the first concern we have, immediate concern, is this rechanneling, and that you know, that that is cutting so quickly into the bank and redirecting it right towards. Our, our homes and the pond, the pond levee that sits right between our homes and and, it, and it's throwing more and more water into the bottom there, that sewage and cool sitting right in it. Same thing like Sunset and it, you can make the argument that it's already doing that <laughs> Sunset, I know. But it's already doing it here. And it, but, but my point is this, I, I you know, I don't know if we can stop that ourselves with riprap or whatever, but, you know, I, if, if y'all think that you, that this is sort of out of, out of your, you know, it's beyond your uh, capability, ability, yeah, or, or even, you know, I, I don't know who has authority over this issue, to be quite honest with you, then, you know, then, that we may decide to take action on our own. And then, of course, the first thing we have to do is find out what we can do with, you know. But we're moving into the wet season, and if this coming winter is like last season, that creek was out of the tank. I know, I, my house sits up on a ridge. When it floods, it's right, it's, it's 15 feet from my house to walk. I mean, the house is sitting right up on the ridge. 
that is a that is a bad flooding problem. That Trevor Paul that took about never talked about floods completely over. And that College Creek travels over Bethel Road to say that to keep it confusing. Not my but that's yeah, Bethel Road. Yeah, that's Road that it travels over. And when it travels over Bethel Road, it floods all that area out. Those people's property over there. But if that sewage lagoon breaks, those that you are gonna have to, it's gonna make the natural lose because you're not gonna have nobody's gonna live down there. Because it's gonna be contaminated big yeah. time. That's right. That's a big sewage lagoon. That's right. And it's I you know, I, I wrote a letter to the to the state when they were building the house or deciding to build it, and I told them what the problem was and they built it anyway. They'd never build a lagoon like that now, by the way. That would never be done like that. What's that lagoon in service? Who does that lagoon in service? At the trailer park at the end of South Montgomery. Yeah, and I said maybe that subdivision now. I, I, I don't know if they have treatment plants or the individual treatment plants for those homes. The trailer park does not. It, the service, it, and I think maybe the homes are also connected into the sewage lagoon. Well, a lot of food for thought. Um, I think this will fall into the same category as to the question we asked about the DQ. Uh, I'm sure we'll get Mr. Baggett to go check this out as well. And then our answers will most likely come from Mr. Kennedy when he comes, what they can do. Um, and then of course we'll find out what we can do for the DEQ in the meantime as well. So the answers aren't available yet. Yeah. We're asking right this is yeah. we're asking the questions to get those answers. So thank you for coming to this board, explaining your situation as well as Mr. Dodge. And then we we're gonna find out those answers I would imagine in the near future, be it a week. Well, thank, thank you all. You, thank you. It's been a great discussion. Anything else from any other board members from Mr. Wagner? Well, good research. <laughs> thank you. Like um, good. We had several detailed <coughs> presentations today. I'm impressed with it. Everybody had handouts. Yeah. <laughs> 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 <Those boards. laughs> all right. Moving right along, we have our road manager's report, Mr. Baggett. Going so long, you have to skip this one if you'd like it. <laughs> <laughs> you can't skip it. We got them here. <laughs> <laughs> Anything to note besides the normal <coughs> work? Yeah, if you turn to the end of the report, you'll see that it's not, a, not the section on. Uh, Capitalization is not there for this month. Uh, I'm going to get that to the board in a few days. Uh, couldn't change that much, but I just wanted to point that out. It wasn't, it wasn't there. Do you think you could add it? I'm just asking. Do you think you make it add it to our next board meeting? I can. Just put it in the packet. All right. So. Uh, oh, no. Nice road was a part of the four year road plan. But as it turns out, uh, the supervisor and I looked at that road again and determined that it would only be require some maintenance rather than to uh, go in and fully redo the road. And uh, so I'm requesting that that be taken off of the four year road plan. That might require somewhere else. And we just go in and upgrade uh, Rice Road to do the maintenance on it. And those two and Is it paid? Is it well, it's DBST. Okay. So it has some bad areas in it. Okay. And rather than go back and reclaim the entire road. So you're, you're just going to do, what would you do? You're just going to. Just do some big out. Patches and. Yeah, big, big out and patches. Okay. And uh, at the intersection of. 
of uh, Bethesda and uh, Rice Road in Bed's Park Field that we fixed. And that's that. Yeah, we'll just have to just 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 time and material. I mean, you're we're probably talking about uh, probably $12,000 worth of material. Yeah. Oh. And we already spent the money out that we have allocated right now for your road plan. You want it removed from for your road plan. That's correct. Oh, Bethesda. So you did get a chance to look at it, do a little bit to Bethesda while you're down there? We didn't do anything to uh, Bethesda. We just did something on us. Look at Bethesda when you go out there and see if it, it needs some attention to it. Is it paved or is it paved? It is paved. So they just kind of leave on that And you'll do that with the asphalt machine? No, we'll do it with uh, uh, the chip seal equipment. Because it's chip sealed on this. So we can do that, we can do repairs. Yeah. And we've been doing it. Uh, the only reason I brought this one up in particular to the board is because it was initially on the four year road plan. So we've done quite a bit of this. So you need a board order to remove that from the four year road plan? Yeah, right. yeah. that's my motion to take, take Rice Road off the four year road plan and just patchwork this thing done. Motion by Supervisor Williams, second by Supervisor Howard. Beat you. <laughs> so, any more discussion from any member? If not, all those in favor say aye. That's a four Oh. Anything else? We have uh, quite a few roads that have the, the drainage ditches, the drainage ditches that parallel the road. Uh, it's not what, what would be considered right away, but it's not really. I mean, those are only dishes we have. They actually drain the dishes for the roads. And, uh, roads, name the roads you're referring to. It's just uh, a series of roads uh, just all over the county where the, the drain the dishes. You know, we, we discussed roads that are coming perpendicular to the roads that we would bring to the board. But there are a lot of roads where the ditches are just parallel like brown roads. Yes. Yeah. And we need to reach out and maybe clean Clear out the where it will go down into the creek. Right. And so I'm asking if we could do that um, on a board order without having to uh, I'm not trying to avoid the board. But having to bring it to the board every time. So it kind of sets us back if we have an opportunity to jump in and do something. Well I don't have a problem with that but I guess what are, what are just a couple of examples of roads you're talking about that are like that? Uh, Brown Road is like that. Uh, the one road, uh, there's a road in uh, Hilbert that does well. That, that way. There are quite a few little roads on uh, in Blackjack that are like that. These are mainly small roads. But it's no, it's no big deal to bring it to the board each time, really. It's just would take a little time, some time maybe. But it's okay. Can I explain further what you're asking? I didn't understand. I didn't understand your request. I okay. So I got a call from Mr. Uh, I don't want to call his name. But a citizen in, uh, in your area. Right. Okay. And the ditches, uh, maybe it's first from here to where the, the uh, chair is up there, the Jerry Chicken. But those are the only ditches that carry water off the road, <coughs> and they parallel the road. Mm -hmm. uh, well, if it's off the right of way, just get a right of entry, you know, to it. Yeah, they, they don't, don't. They have a problem with the right of entry. They don't. Uh, and I don't part. have a definitely don't have a problem with bringing it to the board. It would just be more expedient in some situations if we could just do it right then. As long as you put it in your report, I think we'll be fine. I mean, I'm fine with that. 
Okay. Just, just to be clear, are you saying you, you, you want to go in and open up those ditches more? Uh, 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 I, I guess you can actually clean, up, clean them out. Clean the ditches. Right, and take trees off and do this type thing. Okay, it's just sort of like a, not really a ditch then, it's more like a... Some of them are ditches. It's in the ditch, yeah? Yeah, some of them are ditches, and they're only ditches that carry the water. The only ditches that carry runoff from the road. I'm saying, I'm saying, I, I just wanted to know. Technically, they have a problem with that. It's not a ditches. It's just... It's kind of a maintenance issue, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. You're, you're having to get on private property. Is that what you're doing? And you need and to um, yeah, rectify a drainage issue on the road? Right. Well, well it's on private property, you just get the right of entry. Right, and it's all, it's just, it's the only ditch that the road has. It okay. just happened to be away from the limitations, and we say the road is five feet from the edge of pavement or whatever. It just happened to be. Or the often. Well, as long as you're doing it because then you're carrying the water off from the road. Right. And these ditches don't go like two or three hundred yards perpendicular to the road. They parallel the road. You know, the road eventually forms the the park. So do you're doing it for the county's benefit and not the property owners. That's benefit. right. I do it for the safety and the well-being of the county, but that would be the yeah. road would be in that. Well, can we, can we just give a road manager the authority to, to address those projects as long as he has prior approval, written approval from the landowner? That's a motion. And then he can report back to the board. Yeah, I mean, it's been the road board. Board. That's what I'm saying. Right. Yeah, it's it's more that he feel like he needs to come to bring to the board. If this one I need to bring to the, to the board, I would bring it to the board. So long as you feel like you're making, making evidentiary finding even if it's kind of been reversed, but it, it, an evidentiary finding that it's tied to the health, the welfare, safety, well, safety and yeah. the road, right. you're good. Okay. You want to make that motion? So a motion by Supervisor yeah. Trainer, second by Supervisor William. No more discussion. All those in favor? No. All right. And that right of entry will save you every time. Okay. The, uh, the first came in, the road department, now, on other equipment, <coughs> I had talked to you last time about three additional tractors, that is six tractors, and three additional bush, bush hogs. And um, we've talked, uh, we had the two supervisors, I told the equipment committee, to meet with uh, uh, road grader suppliers. And those the road graders are extremely expensive, like three hundred eighty thousand dollars each. And so we we, uh, we discussed just maintaining the road grader that we have. Uh, we have one now that needs a transmission, which would be fifty thousand dollars. We have one in the shop for eight thousand dollars, and we just finished uh, one. A transmission in one for fifty thousand dollars, uh, forty forty three or something like that, and they added some additional work to it. Uh, we could keep our graders going like that, and actually, I think it probably would be better. And because we're going to need something that we're going to need uh, transports, eighteen wheeler transports. We have three in the shop now, one getting a transmission, one having the front end redone. And we have another one sitting at the shop that we fix and have diagnostics done to. Now the, the transports are different in that you have to, uh, it's more than just maintenance versus the cost of a new truck. It's also state regulations. State regulations are real strict on uh, semi. And we've had a couple of breakdowns on the road lately. And so what I'm saying is it's difficult to keep the truck. It's, it's more than just keeping it running. It's keeping it within the state regulations. So I, I wish the board would consider uh, 
allowed me to get me with Miss Emily, maybe with a, a salesperson, not to purchase, but to find out what these trucks would cost to get them the four semis, because it's going to be difficult to keep them within the regulations. You're talking about the Western Stars and truck, uh, the truck factory? Yes, ma'am. Is it four or five? It is five, but one is hit to the local. One took to the local. Right. I think we just got those paid for them. Mm -hmm. Well, they figure they figure out just right. <laughs> <laughs> so they are starting to the least problem. Can you find them back in? Yeah, they got a really good five day program. At least well, I'm just saying it, it appears that the end of when we get them paid off that they they just want out. Yeah, you know? sure. yeah but when we sign them out, they say they'll put a lot of stipulations into that five day anyway. Yeah. The first time the first time uh, we get right. to we don't have any stipulations, but the second we got stipulations on for hours and so, uh, uh, conditions and everything else. Yeah. And one other item, the low board trailer. We need to replace the low board trailer. The trailer is, uh, has been welded and rebuilt twice since I was here. And uh, it's just, it's really time to take it off the road. I did hear from a gentleman that was working on it that said it was in pretty tough shape. <coughs> so you recommend that we get the tractors? Right. And the three, the, the three tractors, three bush hogs. Right. And the corn. Uh, oh. It'd be six. Six, 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 well, six tractors. tractors. Right. Six three tractors. side cutters, three regular bush hogs. And the truck. And the truck. And, and the local. No, no road graders, but right. permission to repair the existing road graders. That's right. Do we know where that's going to leave our budget for our equipment, our equipment budget? I guess that would be an easy question. Yeah. Uh, Miss Emily. Mm -hmm. I say we're going to be off a budget. <laughs> that's right. Well, we have enough to make papers in our budget, don't we? We'll figure it out. Okay. We just need so, to get, we need to get the specs. Uh, so we can put it on, put all this out on the reverse options. Okay, so we got a motion in the second to do to purchase or to check specs on these things. All of the above. <laughs> all right. So a motion in the second to look at the three bush hogs, the three side cutters. It's going to be motion by trainer, second by Howard. Uh, the six tractors to repair the motor graders that you mentioned. Look, explore what the semis need, what the haul trailers and trucks need. Uh, 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 purchase. If you purchase them, three. Yeah. Do we know that much? Four. Four. To purchase four 18 wheelers. And then a low one. Yes. Mr. Bay, could, 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 could I suggest you put together uh, an equipment request and send it out to all the supervisors so we yes. kind of know, and then you can, you can give us a total of, of what uh, equipment wish list will cost us, well, along with repairing the, I the can't, road. I can't give you a total of what it's going to cost you when put it out for bid. Well, that's true. That's true. So but, but if we can get a, 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 a yeah. list, uh, and I can go and get yeah. that uh, ball ball yeah. yeah. So are we going to advertise it now? I mean, we can advertise and not buy. I think yeah. that's good. Yeah. 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 So yeah. this is all advertised. So this is advertised. And and, and 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 look at look into the buyback. You know the whole deal. The whole deal. I think we look at the lease purchase yeah. too. Yeah. We're looking at what. Yeah, we're all. All of our stuff is lease purchase, but it, it, yeah, we do it always on lease purchase. And depending on the, and I'm asking, this is a question that I'm asking you. For those 18 wheelers, whatever the price comes out to be, and look, if we need them, we need them. But would it be, would it be more feasible? To look at the lease. But depending on how many how many times do we need to move equipment, would you say? Daily, weekly, 
Yes, with the low boy and the semi trucks, no word maybe. Oh, it, we've been going when the when the rain stops. We've been going full blast every day. Well, I understand we're going, but I'm saying, do you move from say Brown Road to Old West Point Road to Sun Creek to Craig Springs Road? You know, do you do that daily, or do you? I mean, how often do we move the big equipment? like the excavators, the dozers, things like that. In a month's time, how many times would you move that equipment? Well, yeah, actually, we probably a little bit. I'd, I'd be, it'd be safe to say every other day. Okay, well then that's too much. Just what I was thinking is, if you only moved it once a week, mm -hmm. once every 10 days, you could try to hire someone right. instead of even buying any local, any track, anything like that. Mm -hmm. You could hire someone to move that could be a price to do it too. Well, the mobile has been down, uh, the tractor that pulls the mobile has been down for a few days. And uh, every day I could tell someone we can't move this or we can't move that. And uh, I just expect a call any day from a supervisor. You know, one of the foremen would call and say, uh, any supervisor would say, I can't get this because I can't get this over here and all this, you know. So we need to be more flexible than that. Okay. We do, yeah. Just we a thought. To, we, need to, we need to move it. Well, let's look into that. Um, we got a motion in a second. Any more discussion on that? Yeah, I, I was just going to give a, a, a comment. Uh, Mr. Maggot, I attend the equipment meeting, and I'd like to commend you for wanting to repair those low graders rather than purchase new ones. On the road grade of calls, like you say, about 360,000, I believe. No, I think it's uh, 380. It was two, well, it's 280, I believe. It was 280. Yes, sir. Uh, between, uh, between 250 and 280. And 280. But it, it costs to repair. The engine is still good, and um, you just put a new transmission in most of them, which is about 40, 40 some thousand dollars. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, but that's been a good savings is what I'm getting at. That's a good savings for the county to be able to repair those. Yeah. Yeah. And, and also, I, I, there's a piece of equipment that I want you to just look at and consider and see what you think. Um, there's an attachment that can go on the back of a dump truck uh, for our shoulder. Yeah. You know, yeah. instead of people, we got men shoveling dirt with a shelf and trying to do the shoulder. That's a piece of equipment that, that will speed up the process a lot and, and get a lot more done. And better and pack that material in yeah. the shoulder. Yeah. So the state has that. Yeah. Well, that's a wish list thing, but that would be, it, would, it would make the roads last a lot longer. And, and save, save labor costs and, and, and less dangerous out there. So, and a better product, to be quite honest with you. Yeah. can't compare it. Yeah. Um, Want to add that in to take a look at? It. Yeah, just just look at it. Let's add that to take a look at. I hate to say it, I don't know, but it's a dump trailer that's got a. Basically, it smears that product in right. on that line and it cuts yeah, that, 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 that grass and everything off, kicking the dirt out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I just check it out. You just call it a box spreader. You you talking about with the clay ground? You can always add. No, it's, it's got dirt ground. in it. Okay. It's got like a dirt show. Yeah, now Columbus, Lowndes County has one of them. I was thinking, if that's what you're talking about, it makes it nice. You know, bring the road up and makes it level. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, when you got the ends and the edges, it, uh, it does a good job. Mr. Baggett, you want to get, go ahead and get them to set to put the tractors out for beds and then if you get something on the truck, you come back Monday and tell us what they look like when we put them out there. Mm -hmm. And Go ahead, we know what we're going in that level when we put it out too. Now, Ms. Garrett, now the other alternative would be to go to whatever's on state contract price and go ahead and get it. That state contract price is that, it's that um, dealer, it's that manufacturer list. Okay. That's not, you know, like a tree, it's just before we're having to buy the um, fire truck from. Okay. And normally, going through reverse auction should be cheaper than going to that manufacturer's state contract. However, if it comes back where it's higher, then we could always go back to the other way. I say it's for a lot of the truck. I think it's a lot of 
that you, you, you can just, if you justify, you don't have to go through the reverse office. It, not, not it didn't not. get changed. It, there was a bill to try to change it, and it died for like five hours. Well, I think we're trying to change something on um, source and supply that we used to do all the time once a year. Right. We're trying to try and get, uh, get out of the reverse option. We, we don't we don't reverse option on source and supply. We're having to get um, price quotes for three months at a time. So we, we're going to sell back the old equipment, this old equipment too, right? Well, I about to ask, I was well about to ask every time we talk about selling back something, we always keep it in the end. We always talk about we're going to sell it, we're going to get new, we're going to sell the old, but we always find a reason to keep the old. <coughs> well, I know you got a few attractors down there. Yeah, we got a lot of them. Of them. Of them. Of them. Of them. Because I thought we were going to sell three, six places. And we'll let Mr. Vanger decide what, what needs to be sold from down there. I'll get a list and I'll get it in the email. When is the next auction? Happen? It's really tough. October the third. October the first, say in October with the guy from uh Tom Disco. Tom Disco. Dinko? No, not not Dinko, but this, this is with Tom. I think I don't know. I don't know. I get it mixed up. Dinko is still there. Yeah, I think. Anyway, I we might have to look. We might have to have three auction quotes to go through auction. I don't know. I can't remember. Well, you think we can do that in time for this auction in October? I hope we can. Oh. Yeah. We'll just make, make our whole thing. Okay. I mean, if you could prepare that, that would be asking a lot to buy next meeting. No, I'm not. I'll get to check it out. If we could, uh, kind of an equipment list uh, that Supervisor Howard was saying that we could say and get some of the, maybe some of the paint. Right. And the payment will be lower. So there's a lot of moving parts in that, but let's explore all options. We got a motion by Supervisor Trainer and a second by Supervisor Howard to look at another observation or whatever. Uh, can you explain what you already have to pick debris up on the side of the road or whether or not you need additional equipment? Because we have a problem with debris with limbs and trees the left side of the road not being picked up, do we have sufficient equipment to be able to pick the debris up on the side of the road? Um, I think along with that, you know, or the foreman, I think we've talked about that, there are over those projects, are they just cutting it? And leaving it there, and are we addressing those foremen that are not that's very following common. through? Because I know that in my district, that's what's happening. The and a lot of times it is actually the foreman that's doing it. They cutting down trees and stuff, and just leaving it right there on the side of the road. And that didn't happen with the prior foreman that I had. Uh, that never happened. So yeah. yeah. And I've talked to the foreman about that because I've gotten you know, three complaints that I went and looked at, and I was really I was really surprised that, that they had done that. I mean, it, it looked terrible. Well, it's creating a problem. And it puts it in the ditches, it's going to. It's creating a flooding it's problem. It's part of the flooding problem. The 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 in the ditches, and water can't get down the, down the ditches. So let's, uh, to both Supervisor Williams and Supervisor Miller's point and my point, let's try to prevent ourselves from doing that. <laughs> Let's turn a new leaf over and not do that. Miss mm -hmm. Faggett, do they tell you, like, you know, I know they don't have to tell you every day when they go out and do maintenance things, but, you know, that's a pretty big thing to go out and just cut trees down. And I know we've had discussion where you didn't even know they were doing that. Right. I mean, why are they taking it on themselves to, instead of doing issues that need to be done, that we know need to be done, even for the past state aid stuff on the side of the road? Why are they just cutting trees down and letting them drop? I mean, well, when we are uh, every each what I do each morning, I have each maintenance foreman, the foreman that don't meet at the uh, central shop, to call me and give me a list of everything that they're doing for that day. Now, in many cases, they'll decide to do something else and not call back. Because a lot of times I'll think I know what everyone is doing based on what they told me 
and it's certainly not the truth when I when I have time to give an instruction, run out and look. And uh, so a lot of cases they they, they don't. Yeah, I don't know, they, they'll say they're doing one thing, but they're likely to be doing something else. Well, uh, and you know, you talked about that issue with them pulling a ditch on a road and leaving it on a Friday afternoon and not grading it out and then us having a rat over rain and how terrible it was. So, you know, we're seem to be having a lot of issues with, I think, with a particular foreman. So I hope that we can get those straightened out. I am, I am working on them. I talk to him uh, often and tell him the situation he's in with uh, at least two supervisors. And uh, so I'm, I'm working on it. I'm working on it. We, but we have talked about this several times. Yeah. About the debris being left side the road. So what's going to be our course of action to be able to move forward, get it taken care of? Are we just going to continue to have discussions? Uh, are we going to come up with a plan to get it done? You going to come up with a plan to get it done? What about chipper? I'm just asking. I'm on like small things. Would that be unfeasible? I mean, I know you've got to move. The ideal situation would be. Uh, something to pick it up. A knuckle blow. Like you said, yeah. That would be an ideal thing. Uh, short of that, <coughs> the, the temper. Yeah, I don't think it would work. Yeah, it's, 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 it's scary. Like, Someone could. Yeah, what about have, even have a second crew behind that crew that's cutting? They're designed to. With a dump truck, so that was my thing with the mini excavator. With a dump truck and a mini excavator, which would be two gentlemen, I feel like you could come behind the cutters and be able to pick that up. Now, I feel like that. That's because that's what I do. But, um, no, we have a, we have a foreman that does it. Okay. It's just a matter of really working. I'm talking about working like you like you weren't working. I know. Well, so we have we have a foreman that pick, that cuts it and picks it up and don't leave anything in the road. Uh, let's with all our foreman, let's turn a new leaf over today and tell him as a board we don't need to have that happen anymore. Because what I'm hearing around the table, what I've seen, now the road that I had that it was left on, you know, the state aid they required that in our maintenance. You know, and another project came due on other side of the county so they had to leave but let's finish the projects and finish picking up material in the ditches to prevent problems like what we saw earlier this morning it's a bigger picture than what they see mm -hmm. and so let's just remind them of that because you probably got three supervisors that are seeing that so um and i think we'll be fine you know just explain it like that um but that is a good point from the other supervisors that we don't need to allow that to keep happening. If yeah, not, yeah. then take measures. I think we'll have support from the board to take measures to keep that from happening. And I do, uh, I push, I, I, I don't want to call it push, I encourage the guys who work do a lot of write ups and at some point it just kind of, I just have to back off for a minute. And, uh, the documentation. Right. Set you free. Yeah. So every chief I've ever had told me that. So just just document and explain, ask, explain, require. So um, I think you're hearing now, if, you know, from the board. I think that's a that's something that needs to go away now. Okay. So I think that would you know that would be beneficial to him well as the citizens that we serve. So the citizens see it. They certainly they see do. it. They certainly see that and they see the difference in performance. And um, which is I mean concerning. I went down the my, that long view Edgerton Road, I went and drove several small trees out of the road myself. You know, when it was nasty too wet to do anything else. Just because I didn't want another phone call. Well I've been encouraging them. I've been doing I hate to I hate to say all him but I mean, I've been encouraging him to. Uh, he does good work. It's just that's the thing right there. It's just got to be a little more detailed. And uh, but and another thing for me is is in Whispering Pines, just 
kind of check and see when we can finish that project up while we're on that discussion. So, but we have a motion from Supervisor Crane and a second. Mr. President, I have a bit. Yeah, more discussion. Okay. Let me uh, commend. Let me commend the last group, and I need to say this because I've been complaining about debris on side of the road, but that last group, your construction, new construction guy, Derek, he cleaned that area up so good that everybody in that community was bragging about it. Mm -hmm. So I want to be all negative. I want to be some positive too when I see it, when I see positive things happen. And I want to be able to commend those individuals. They did a great job on the last job they did in my district. Motion and second. Supervisor Trainer on looking into the road equipment that we had discussed previously. Any more discussion? Not all those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion to. And we need to accept. May I, may I go ahead and we did ask for two culverts while he's here? Okay. Can I go ahead and do that? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Um, William Gamble, he would like access to his property. He's on Sturgis West Point Road. Oh. No, 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 no. Yes, sir. 617-2996. He's approximately one mile north of Pleasant Ridge Road intersection, north of the two bridges. On the east side. That's your motion? Yeah. Oh, you got a here, here, I got a, a second one too. Okay. Uh, hold on. We'll do them both at the same time. Access to property, correct? Okay. Um, Mr. Frankie needs a culvert on Big Creek Road just east of Frank's Drive to access his property. His phone number is 418 8831. Is that his name? Mr. Frankie? Frankie, uh. Jimmy Franks. Jimmy Franks. Jimmy Franks. Sorry. That's okay. Jimmy Franks. That's it. Alright, so that's your motion to do those two. It is. All right. Second, second by Supervisor Trainer. Any more discussion? If not, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Motion to Motion that we accept the roadmap report. Motion by Supervisor Trainer. Second by Supervisor Howard to accept the roadmap report. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Motion to Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I, I do have something before you leave. Oh, yeah. All right. I, you're, you're 45 and I, I'm going to But. We're gonna have to get an open, open road cut on 553 Harris Road. 553 Harris Road. That's gonna be an open road cut to put down a water line. Motion by Supervisor. So that's my motion. Williams. Second. Second by Supervisor Trainer. 553 Harris Road. 553 Harris Road. Um, you're not gonna put that through Clive's office, so we'll and you'll know where those are. Uh, who, Clive's office? Yeah, because he keeps the ongoing record of where all that's been placed in the road. And if he don't go through him, he always, he's the one that the right-of-way access originates from. Well, uh, he, uh, not that if you don't roll, if you don't roll boy, I would understand that. He has to approve that. Well, he's not going to know that there's a water line. Yeah, we can, we can go in on that. And that is a motion. No, we can let him know then that okay. we, we're going to inform uh, Mr. Pritchard that there's an uh, open cut at 553 Harris Road to install a wall line. Let, let, just, just so I'm clear on, on I normally say when a, when, a, when a water association calls me and, and want to go across the road, I send them a client so that client can tell them yeah. what how to cut it and what to backfill it with. Yeah. Is, is, is that what you right the water association is right. going to cut you and, and we already understand what the backfill is with because we've been backfilling we've been backfilling open cuts all the time and you you know what material you to present to oh. us okay. and haul you hauled the material the last time last time we had an open road cut you hauled material to us that we needed to do the backfill with 
So that's really not a problem. Uh, Clyde does need to be informed, but Clyde really not going to do anything. I think Mr. Bagley is the one that's going to haul the material to do the uh, fact field. Normally, normally, when we go in and work on that road again or something, we would know where the water lines are. So when there's so when we do the road, they're going to tear it, tear it up. So it's going to This is a gravel road now. I know. We're never going to pave it. But what if one day, what she's saying is, Clyde is not going to be the one to pave it. Okay. Mr. Okay. Badger is going to be the one to pave it. This is a county road. Right. But what she it's saying. It's a county gravel road. You need to know about it, but. Well, she but Mr. Badger Badger needs to know, know where it's at. at. That way he can put it on that map. So when, yeah. Let's say we're all gone from, I'm saying 10 years from now, if someone pays that road, then that would be noted that that's where that water yeah. lies. I think we have already said that Cloud will be in front. Cloud will be in front. So my motion is that we allow. Uh, the water sy system is not needed on the open cut because it's not a system that I'm even affiliated with. It's not, water system? It's not, it's a um, uh, pleasant road from what I understand. Uh, whoever is over 555, um, I talked to the person I got the name of the water system. But they are requesting <coughs> open cut. So. I can get the name to you at a later date. Mm -hmm. We got a motion by Supervisor Williams, second by Supervisor Trainer to do an open cut. And then also let's inform our county engineer of the location of it so they can have it on their mapping system. Any more discussion on that? Not all those in favor say aye. Motion carries unanimous. All right. Anything else before I move on? Homeland Security Grant, uh, Chief Deputy Garnett. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. I'm going to try to make it good for y'all. It's all in the day for All right, so um, we were actually contacted by Homeland Security. We have a deputy that, that teaches the active shooting stuff, and it just came about, so we pretty much know we will be funded. Um, but I'm here to get permission to apply. The total grant is going to be $189,432.06. What this includes, per their contacting us, is a $69,000 active shooter kit that will stay with our agency. Uh, along with that will be a 2021 Chevy Tahoe for $38,000. The lights communication equipment, shower rooms, and installation, $9,500. Uh, and then we added in some protective gear, uh, and also an enclosed trailer, uh, and mobile radios, and tourniquets to tie up for the patrol uh, unit, totaling $189. Uh, so probably won't get funded the total amount is what we were told, so we put in the, the radios and extra stuff. But, uh, pretty much the active shooter equipment, the Tahoe, and the trailer is, is what we're looking at. Okay. Well, so we need a motion and a second to approve the so move. Grant. Motion by Supervisor Howard, second by Supervisor Williams. Any more discussion? Or Chief Deputy going in? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 And I have one more thing from Blackjack Roast. Mm -hmm. um, so Mississippi State University contacted us. They run radar on Blackjack. You know, we're not allowed to run radar, so they handle the speed limits and stuff. They are requesting the board to drop the speed limit in the construction zone to 20 or 25. They just said that would help them, and the board would be the one to do it. So I'm just a spokesman, y'all. What is it now? I think it's 45 like every other county. Yeah. Even through the construction zone, but that's what they were requesting for it to be lowered. And then just in the construction zone, they weren't asking you to promptly change so these signage. It's right. a temporary. It's temporary. Yeah, yes, sir. Yes, yes sir. sir. We need a board order on that. I don't mind doing it. We need a board order to reduce the. Uh, within, the uh, within the construction zone. Within the construction zone. Yeah. 
for the construction on the Blackjack Road 220 or 25? Not 25. Right 25. Right. So, and maybe we can visit that and see whether that will work if we need to go lower. But Correct. They just 20 said 20 miles. or 25, and I will tell you that they, they have 20 mile hour speed limits on campus and fast lanes. Yeah. So I was, I was on a 25 was about that. Yeah. So, and Keith, could you relate to them the cost to start in the very beginning, give out a few warnings and stuff first? So, yeah. We'll take some They write some tickets out there now. Yeah. I'm telling you. But uh, so 25 mile an hour temporarily through the Blackjack Road construction zone. Correct. That's a motion by Supervisor Williams. Yeah. Second by Second. Supervisor Howard. We want discussion. If not all those in favor say aye. 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 Will Mr. Baggett take care of putting the signs up? Yes, sir. The sign shop. Anytime I have a sign down or whatever, I just make a call. Do you want me to make that call or? Well, you can, but. We'll, we'll hit them both directions. Okay. You do it, and then we as a board, and I'm sure Miss Emily will too. Okay. Right. Thank you. We'll get it up. Thanks Thank so much. Thank you. All right. Update on, or do, do we want to do this now, Rob, or do we want to follow back? Let's get all the other out of the way. And come back. Whatever you want to do. Let's come back to that. Um, Chancery Clerk business, Miss uh, Livingston. I have a couple of things. The first thing I have is that we do not have a CD for the month of August, and the funds remain the same. Motion to acknowledge no CD. Motion by Supervisor yes. Williams, second by Supervisor Howard. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries there. So the second thing I had was another um, 16 section erroneous tax sale. Um, it was on a Mary Ware, parcel number 155 16 6.08. An erroneous. 16 sections, that's the only one? That's the only one on that one. We need a motion and a second to yeah. acknowledge that there are only a 16 sections there. Motion by Supervisor Howard, second by Supervisor Miller. All those in favor say aye. Motion keep up. The last thing I have is I need a board order to approve the recalculation of assessment of the real and personal property. Need a motion so move. Move. Uh, motion by Supervisor Howard, second by Supervisor Williams uh, to reassess real and personal property. Mm -hmm. any, any discussion on the matter? If not, all those in favor? Uh, That's all I have. And if I could pass this around, if each of you would sign above where your number is. And I have your, mark, your district number on there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right there. And I will move forward to uh, county business above administration. Miss Emily. We've seen the payroll changes in the packet. Need a motion and a second to accept the payroll changes. So moved. Motion by Supervisor Howard, second by Supervisor Williams to accept the payroll changes. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries unanimous. Request from Mr. Pritchard to go ahead and pay Cook and Sons the balance of their um, courthouse road project at three thousand nine hundred sixty-seven dollars. Mm -hmm. And Joe pick what saw the box sale. What do you think? I mean, no. Yeah, I mean, we they went back and redid it again, but uh, I think it gets worse every time. So. But yes, we're, we're going to move forward. I need to borrow a pen and all of a pencil. Thank you. So you say go ahead and pay? Motion by Supervisor Miller, second by Supervisor Howard to pay the $30. And they didn't strike it. They did? Yes. Okay. So at least, you know, people can see it on there. To pay the cook. The striping looks great. Cook construction thirty nine sixty seven. All those in favor say aye. aye. <coughs> Motion carries. But it wasn't cook construction that or mean, the box sale. I, I know, but it, I know it goes through them, but they they were it was a subcontractor. All right, Preacher, didn't you enter an invoice that's requesting payment for his balance of that same project 
of ten thousand six hundred twenty nine dollars and four cents. Supervisor Miller, Great. second by Supervisor Williams. Any more discussion on the matter? If not, aye. all those in favor say aye. Aye. Motion carries unanimous. A request to pay Danielle Carson a request for Long Beach Iverson Road in the amount of one hundred and seventy-eight thousand six hundred and eighty-four dollars and thirty-eight cents. And I'm happy with that. I'll make that motion. Uh, Second by Supervisor uh, Howard. Um, one thing in in the I went and looked at the bridge, and, and this is for all bridges. We need to make sure we keep this straight. Is who's responsible for hauling the, the, the material away? The excess dirt, concrete, things of that nature. And it says in the contract that they're the ones that are supposed to haul the debris away. They're going to do that, but they said that. Basically, they came up to me and kind of tried to bulldog them, saying, when are you going to get this debris away? I said, well, let's check the contract. He said, you should take it. So just be mindful of that in the future. Uh, they're the ones that are responsible for hauling excess debris away. But we got a motion in a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries you know. Thank you. On that same order, I've got Sun Creek Road. Bridge for thirty-one thousand four eighty-five twenty-eight. All right. Need a motion by Supervisor Howard, second by myself on the Sun Creek Bridge. Pay thirty-one four eighty-five. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Mm -hmm. aye. Mm -hmm. aye. Mm -hmm. They're requesting a jail slide change order increase of eight thousand dollars, and this is where they're basically inserting a pipe to keep the drainage from running off of our building down that slope. It does have the top of the step and then the bottom of the step. Top and bottom of the step. Yeah. Well this one's at the top of the comes out of the comes off of our building. They're actually putting a drainage thing onto a um, downspout on our building to keep it moving. All right. Motion for approval. Motion by Supervisor Williams, second by Supervisor Trainer. Any more discussion? If not, all those in favor, say aye. Aye. Motion carries unanimous. At the last board meeting, the election commissioners came and asked to pay the poll manager and themselves an extra $50 for each of the elections for hazard pay. And it's my understanding that the Secretary of State is going to be reimbursing that money back to the county, so it will not be money that we're it will be money that we get reimbursed for for that. And this is for just during this time period, correct? Yes, just okay. during this time period. Be September and the November election. Okay. So I'll move motion by Supervisor Riley. Second. Second by Supervisor Trainer. Any discussion on the matter? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 And they deserve it for what they do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, change orders, budget amendment. Change orders and move. Motion by Supervisor Trainer. Trainer. Second by Supervisor Trainer for a change order. In Chancery. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion to Okay. <coughs> we got some tail facts right away. Request for the non fiber optic cable. The first one is from Twin Gum Lane and Wood Ridge Road. We need to do them all together. Yeah. Can we do them all together? Yeah, yeah that's what it's. Um, yeah, but I was going to mount them. Yeah, just, okay, <laughs> the second one is Mount Olive Road. Right. The third is South Montgomery and East Courthouse Road. And the next one, final one on that is Self Creek Road. There's one on Bell Lake, too. Fairway is that Seth Montgomery and East Okay, Park. I just want to make sure that's on there because yeah, that's the fair house is about Lampkin Street. Well, that, that's a different deal. Okay. Right. I'll answer. make the motion on my uh, Or did you already have a motion? Motion by yeah. Supervisor yeah. Williams. I'll second. second by Supervisor Miller. It's yeah. these four. All those in uh, favor say aye. Uh, uh, motion carries on those. Okay. The next one that's shown separate, that is where there won't be run off of 
right here over here on lantern streets over to that um meridian health care clinic yeah. that they're going to run it down through the county's property and that's what that one's for that's why i kept it separate right. it's yeah. giving them the access across the county property there for that building Business supervisors, head starts, request for gravel. Right, got a, got a letter from the uh, head start director requesting some gravel down at ICF head start. I think we did this before. Yeah, he was asking for one or two loads. Is that the motion? Motion, yeah. motion by supervisor Tran, second by supervisor Howard. Uh, any discussion on the matter? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. <laughs> um, I guess the, the last thing would be we do have uh, some curfew talks uh, and if the sheriff you know just kind of some background on why these discussions are taking place uh, quite honestly I wish we could have done this before this past weekend so uh, yeah. Well, we, we're just dealing with things now that, that we've never had to deal with before. Clay County, I talked to the sheriff over there. Theirs is still in effect till September 30th. Theirs is from 10 to 5 in the morning, I think. problem we're having is, is we're having these people that, that's coming over here 
and we having these large parties. We having things now that we've never dealt with. We having block parties. And used to a block party, man, if I lived in a neighborhood, everybody get together and we'd cook hamburgers and hot dogs and we'd socialize and meet all the neighbors. Well, now we're having block parties and somebody's setting up a, having a DJ in their front yard and now we're having hundreds of people show up at these block parties. We had one Friday night out at Hickory Grove and we always get called because the street gets blocked, loud music. So we have to go out and deal with them. They got one planned this, this Friday at sunset. We've got, um, we picked up on three flowers, Mr. Joe, out in Williams Road. Supposedly, supposedly that's stopped. But, uh, you know, they just, they just popping up everywhere. And, and a lot of times, you know, we, and, and as you well know, we had the problems two weeks ago. Actually, out of Simmons Field, I know Mr. Trainer. It's familiar with that. We had uh, had a couple of young ladies get killed in an automobile accident out there. Won something in the morning. We've had shots fired calls out there every single time that they've been open. And then about a month or so ago, we had it carry over to the roundabout out at Mississippi State where a lot of shots were fired out there. Uh, we've arrested three people. We're still uh, looking for two. So we have all the shooters there. but. You know, we're just dealing with, with them coming in, and, 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 and you know, we're just kind of getting overwhelmed. The, the deputies, we just, you know, we can just go to so many places. Now you got the students back, and now we're dealing with apartment complexes there, too. So, you know, it was just something that I'd like y'all to consider, you know, to, to kind of help us kind of get through this. To, uh, but uh, these, these parties has just been it. And it's not 15 to 20 show up at the party. I mean, it's hundreds. I mean, it, it completely shuts the it completely shuts the road down. You couldn't get a fire truck or ambulance down those roads if you had to. So we have to go out there and start trying. And then I send three deputies out there to 150 or 200 people trying to get cars moved. You know, at 1:30 or 2 o'clock in the morning, and you know it's a dangerous, it's an officer safety deal for, for us. You know, but but that's just some of the things that you know that, that we're dealing with and. You know, we were just thinking maybe for the remainder of this month or something, and we don't we don't have any football games starting until October here. So I, I was thinking that there was didn't we have something about parties in the county or something well, like that? This was a while back we passed something. Well, we got a road ordinance, but it doesn't it, it doesn't deal with block parties. See, it, it deals with nightclubs and and people where they're charging to get in, but it doesn't deal with, with you having a big party at your house. See. It, I mean, and maybe that might be something that you want to look at, or an attorney can look at, or something. We somehow did address that, though, in that meeting. Not that I'm aware of on block that's, parties. That's a limit. Yeah. That's a limit on that. Well, you, yeah, yeah, but, but well, that, but that's true, but we deal with all these apartments where there's two or three hundred at these apartments, too, so, you know, I mean, it's just, a, I don't know what you do other than run them off, you know, or break them up, but, but the problem just if you ran them off here, I would imagine the problem just moved through the Well, it did, and, and one of the issues we had, if you might, you know, that they left the parties and they went to the Sprint Mart across from Star Ford and completely the people in the store locked the doors. They actually locked the doors. And so, I mean, they had all the gas pumps blocked, so we finally moved them there, but now I think they went into the town and the city had to go. You know, we just, we just kind of moving them from one place to the next, you know, and, and, and uh, well, for the safety of this county and the people that live in it, I mean, I don't know about 10 uh, p.m. to 5. Oh, yeah, that's, yeah, I would maybe that. What about like a midnight to say 4 or 5 in the morning? Just, I, I, I mean, that, that's, that's, that's just fine with us. But And I understand, I, I, I get it, this is a college town. I mean, I, I, I understand that. But we know. could do it until, say, maybe. The game, the first game that we play here is what day? Uh, it's in October. It's October. October. The second or the third? Third, third. The third, yeah. My, my yeah. suggestion is go with 10 or 5. I mean, well, I mean that's what, what I was thinking want. now. Compared to what we want. Yeah. Well, no, the, longer you, the longer you delay it, that's going to be the longer it's going to Well, the only thing you probably going to have that one is high school football. You know, you, you got all that. And really, our problem. You know, all our problems that we have is after midnight. I mean, all the problems that we have, the shots fired, 
most of them are going to be after midnight, 1, 1.30 in the morning. Yeah, after midnight. <laughs> but John, I mean, and my suggestion is to do it like we've been doing it. I know we got to meet again Monday, so we can tell. I say do the curfew for this week until we meet again. Until we just keep doing it every time we meet. We just evaluate every meeting. Yeah. Yeah. Next meeting, though, here's what we could face. Uh, is that, in other words, that night of the third, that would be before our first meeting in October. Well, now we meet again next next Monday, right? So yeah, we can evaluate. We right. can evaluate. Let's let's we'll do that. That's not a problem. Do you want to go as early as ten? Do you want to say midnight? I, I got. I, I will say this: you, you're trying to not you're, you're trying not to interfere with some of your business. You just had the the, the movie theater open. You just had a lot of these restaurants open. My my. Look, this is up to y'all, and I'm going to do what y'all tell me to do. But if you if you constrain this too much, then you're going to end up having a situation with the, the movie movie theater just open. But that's in the city. Yeah. Well, these people don't just come from well, the city. Just, they're they're going to drive through the county to get home. Well, it's going to be a countywide ordinance, including the city of Stalin. Right. But as long as they don't congregate. Uh, I thought the yeah. sheriff was just talking to him, talking about these parties. Yeah, we're talking about parties right now. And what I'm thinking is this. If you extend it until midnight, well, 12.30 he gets a call. It's 2 o'clock in the morning before we can finally get people cleared out. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's for people traveling. But that's not what the, the yeah. keep in mind, the ordinance doesn't say that. The ordinance is, look, I get it. I mean, our sheriff department is going to be careful as to how they apply. Mm -hmm. But when you write an ordinance, it applies to all. It, it really does apply to everybody. And, I, and, I, and here again, I'm, like I said, I'm going to do what y'all want me to do. I just want y'all to be careful in terms of, and some of these people he's talking about, these are law-abiding people now. So you do an ordinance that you change the wording in the ordinance to say. Why can't we address the block party? I was going to say to address. I mean, why should, why should the, the whole community, party. the whole county be punished? punished? Yeah. For something that a few were doing, why can't we just address that? Um, and, and that way we don't, you know, no that's where the gathering. issues are coming from. Right? No gatherings, yeah. period, after, so. Is that the only trouble you're having is with the block party? I think so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so you, you got to understand, so we, we had an issue with Simmons Field, and they, they had a problem out there. Well, what happens is everybody rushes away, and then they gather at a convenience store that is closed down and we have three people charged with 15 counts of aggravated assault uh, where shots were fired across the parking lot and into an apartment across the street so when the block party breaks up then then, then it's congregating at convenience store parking lots it's falling into the city the city is hoping that we do a curfew because they go to the city and they, then they get run off from this location and they go to another location and uh, j j just to be honest with you we, we, we sat back on club rock uh if you remember and didn't do anything until five kids got shot and th then we made a move and, and the sheriff's not wanting to wait until somebody is injured or killed before we try to put a stop to it, but the block party, yes, needs to be addressed, but it's what happens afterwards is, is when they go somewhere else, and the problem that started at the block party carries over to another area inside the county. So, so what are you, you suggesting? What, what, what would you like for us to do? Well, I, I, I think I would like to see something maybe put in the roadhouse orders that concerning block parties. Whether if they if they're gonna have a block party they at least gotta to come to the sheriff's office, do get a permit, and then then we can have like the roadhouse they have to they have to prove who their security is gonna be. You know, it'd be some I mean it wouldn't be everything that would deal with the business, but it would at least be who's having this party, what time is it gonna start, how many security officers are you gonna have working this party. That's that type of thing. That'd be something that the attorney would have to to, to address, but I mean, at least we would know 
where, where it's going to be and, and that type of thing. But, but it's like uh, Chad said, you know, this, this carryover is, is, is our problem. So the curfew would be a better mechanism to you to clear this road off is what I'm hearing. Well, it, of the yeah, moving through the county. Yeah, well, that's what I'm saying. I mean, if we're just moving it from one part of the county to the, to the next, we're not really doing anything. So I'm, I'm going to ask you this. You go to a block party, we put a curfew in, whatever time. And you go there and you say, okay, the curfew, y'all got to leave, and they congregate somewhere else. You're going to arrest all of them when they come to the other place. Yeah, so you can, all you can do is run them off. That's what we're doing now, you know. Curfew will keep them from congregating. Yeah. Well, well how is it going to keep them from congregating when we've already told them to disperse the ball? I, and I'm just, I'm, well, the I'm, reason I'm is, is the asking these questions because the these are not people that are following the request of law officers anyway. So well, even if we put a, a curfew out there. You know, unless there's some type of enforcement behind it. Well, you can write tickets. Gonna, yeah. you, you can you can give them a ticket. You know, for violation of the curfew. Are we gonna are, are we gonna limit the people that can congregate together? Is that sequence? Well, I don't know how, I don't know how you do that. You know. I think. Yeah, the thing is, the surrounding counties around us have curfews. We don't have the curfew. So all the problems are coming into Octavia Hall County. If I'm hearing this correct, they're coming to Octavia Hall County because there is no curfew. At, and, and when the curfew starts on your surrounding county, well, if I live in Clay County and it's 10 o'clock, I will drive into Octavia Hall County because nobody can stop me. Well, the flyer they sent out for the one at Hickory Grove said Columbus versus Stahl. And it was a flyer that they sent out and, and you know, everybody you know, gets it, and then and then they sent out the one for this weekend. So, you know, I mean, so you don't know, you don't know how many is coming. See, the one that sent us for you, nobody knew what was going on. Yeah, not even the owner knew that it was going to be over. My my daughter said it was two thousand. Somebody said it was three thousand people that were going to be over. Did you you had like drag race from there too? No, no, you just had they they have just social media. They do. I mean, the social media is so powerful. And they will put these little events together, and you got kids coming from Pontotoc. That's right. Uh, the girls from Macon, and these were mostly high school individuals who were coming. I had a policeman tell me they had a roadblock set up, and they were coming through, and they were from Meridian, and and he asked him, he said, "What in the world?" And he said, "Well, this is the place to be," and they were coming from Meridian, and and, and you know, so I mean, it's just uh, happening. Yeah, I mean, they started they they started having these. They call them trail rides. Yeah, that's rides another areas. problem. That's you right. Know, another problem. People are coming from all over, bringing four wheels. And somebody's charging ten dollars for them to ride. Well, they thinking it's this big, huge place that you can go ride. Well, they get there, take their money, and uh, yeah. you know, we we got called north of town where they'd cut a man's fence, and they were riding all through his property. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, so sheriff, you said your major issues are happening after midnight. Right. That's that's when your major right. issues. About midnight to four. If y'all can't tell, I'm uncomfortable with these things. This is <laughs> but <laughs> but if, if, if the sheriff needs a tool to work on with this, and I get it, I know exactly how he's he's trying to protect some people. We can we can relook at these things every couple of weeks. If that works, if y'all are comfortable with it, then let's let's do what we need to do. So try the trainer had the best point. Let's do a trial run on the day. So our next board meeting, and let's do maybe midnight to four in the morning. That way, somebody's going dove hunting in the yeah. morning, and they got a ways to travel. That you know, of course, if you pull somebody over in there decked in camouflage, and then they got their son in the yeah, that's seat, right. but that's right. What about midnight to four o'clock? I don't, I don't think, think anybody's yeah. going to oh, yeah. come into Octavia Hall County at four in the morning. <laughs> there, if you can't get in from midnight. To the four, I think that stops, especially from the east, not to be clay and all that. You cut that corridor off for those four hours, then I think you'll be in the clear. Uh, and that really need, wasn't an effect the working, the working person. Do you need a fine attached to this as well? Because what, a lot of what I'm seeing is you're sending them home. If you don't give them something to say, hey, if it doesn't cost yeah, you well, a little bit, you're not going to be Yeah, well, we had that before. I think when we had it in place for ever how long we had it in place, I think we looked back and I think we issued 28 curfew violations during that month or two or whatever it was. 
and it's, I mean, with law enforcement, I'm sure it sticks out like a sore thumb. You know. Well, it helped us on an auto burglary. It helped us on a lot, a lot of things, you know, after midnight, two or three o'clock in the morning. Well, you're talking about, when we're talking about being proactive in the safety of the county, when you're hearing about shootings, just had that wreck right there yeah. by the Simmons Field. Yeah. Two people were hurt or killed, three are hurt. These are safety issues, right. you know, to protect people. So, well, supervisor, are the only family saying it's, it's safety issues that are causing all this trouble, and these mandates are for everybody. And so, that's my only concern is that we are mandating everybody in the county with a government mandate. Are you? For a few that are causing problems. But the only, I guess my and, question And is if we don't have a ticket system or we don't, I mean, I know that they'll be able to say there's a curfew, you gotta go home. Um, I get it, but I, I mean, I'm all ears too to a better solution. So you're saying don't do anything? No, I didn't say that. Well, what do you think? What should we do? I, I don't know. What I'm all ears. Well, that's, 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 that's my point. <laughs> <laughs> I think, I think a fine, there needs to be at least a $50 fine, something that pops these, because yeah. you know, 50 bucks to a 18 year old, whenever I was 18, that's a lot of money. They're making a bunch of I mean, whatever, I don't know what whatever the, the number is. is. I, just, I just thought if you broke the curfew, you broke the law. Yeah. You can and we fine. issue them an arrest citation. So basically what an arrest citation is nothing different than a traffic ticket. It gives them a date to be in court. And, and the violation is curfew violation. And of those guys, I'm trying to remember, I go to court every Tuesday and they had some come up and I think it was a $200 fine on the coronavirus is what, is what I think I remember on the docket was $200. I'm not, I'm not asking for that, I'm just saying that was what it was on the coronavirus. What you do is like up to X, right. whatever amount is, and then the judge can look at it. The judge can right. that. Okay. Sheriff, can you show what county, what all counties have curfew around us? Well, I know Clay. I don't know if Lowndes has, has dropped theirs or not. I know at one time it was Lowndes, Clay, Knoxville, Winston. Uh, did Webster have one too? No. Webster never, never had one in us, I think. Yeah. Well, we're going to have to address the, the block party. That seems to be the, yeah. the, the big problem in the, that we're dealing with. We don't get them together together the first time they have no one to go after war. So the sheriff did say that he would like to have approval for a block party. And I think that's a good idea so he would know. On the roadhouse ordinance. Yeah, that he would know whether or not he needs to have additional personnel right. to be able to deal with them or well, the situation. Well, that's true. Or, or put the burden on them and make them provide security. If they're going to have a block party, at their house, then they have to provide them security like we do at the roadhouse or you know, Well, the roadhouse or I think you have to have a security guard for every hundred people. Well, you do, and then you have to have cameras and all that, which you at a block party. I mean, I don't think you could do that at somebody's house, but that'd be something that, that Rob would have to, you know, would sit down and have to look at. We almost need to have an ordinance because the vicious dog ordinance came up. Right. We need to have an ordinance meeting. I mean, I hate to say that. Yeah. We need to define a block party in terms of numbers. Right. Because just because the family is outside yeah. 15 or 20 right. people, that's, that's not right. a block party. Yeah, that, that's right. But if we get up to probably about 100 or so, then we get it into a block party type situation. I say anything over 20 because the ordinance right now, social distancing, was 20 of them. Mm -hmm. So if you go over that, I mean, if you've got 50 people at your house, and there's 20 cars on the road, that could be a very big problem. And really and true, it's not a block party, it's a party. It's a party. I mean, it's a party because people come from everywhere. It's not a, it's right. not a block party. Right. Right. So, Sheriff, you want, you want to do this midnight before curfew? I, I think it would help. We can try it. Hey, we can try it for a week, it, you, know, whatever, for a week. you know, whatever. Now, if you're leaving the midnight movie, if you're heading to work, because I've had somebody that stopped me at Lowe's, he said, man, I've been pulled over so many times, I think they know my vehicle. I said, well, did you get a ticket? He said, no. They knew I was coming to work. They didn't give me a ticket. I said, well, you're fine. But let's make it midnight before in the morning. 
You okay with that? Oh, I'm great. That's fine. You want to make that successful? <coughs> Most of my supervisor training, yeah. second of my supervisor Howard, that between now and our next meeting on the 14th, we'll have a midnight to four in the morning curfew for safety reasons. And I wish we didn't have to do any of it, but that's the only answer at the moment. So uh, all those in favor say aye. aye. Motion carries unanimous. I hate we have to do that, guys, but safety, safety first. Um, anything else before I go back to uh, Attorney Robertson? We got update on legal issues. Are you ready? Yeah. All right. The um, I'm far enough away from y'all to be able to speak. To a lot of these are legal, almost every one of these are legal issues, but I, uh, there was one issue that was brought up a few minutes ago that you need to be aware of. And you're getting a lot of pushback from the university right now because of the $50,000. Uh, they, they, we agreed to pay $50,000 on this um, pickup and drop it's off. That. This one. Right. Um, the, the audit department's told us we can't pay that. Now, here was the confusion. And, it's, and in fairness to the university, they were unaware that we are under different regulatory constraints. When you're dealing with the city of Starkville, the city of Starkville can write that check every time because they've been, they've been given that authority. Unless we have been specifically given the authority, you can't do it. We haven't been given the authority to, to, to do anything with, with this program. When we originally went into this, there was the assumption that we could do this similar to what the, the, the uh, city had done. I have been in contact with them, um, it, even though it doesn't appear that they think I've been in contact with them. I've been in contact with them. They just don't like the answer. They, they don't like the fact that I've, I, that I've had to say that we can't do this. Now, I have asked to find out if there was a way for us to get them taken care of because, frankly, they've provided some services during this time. They've sent some, now, whether it was $50,000 worth, or that's, that's not up to me, or that's not an art. That's not uh, the issue. The issue is they provided this service out we'll there, and then, then y'all agreed to it. Exactly. Preliminary. So the reality is, is that for next year, it's an, not an issue. But we, at some point, I've got to figure out a way to at least make them whole. And they're they're not they're not happy about, about it, nor would I be happy about it if I was owed that money. So that, that you need to be aware of that situation. Um, I, I don't be able to work this out. Yeah, I think we'll be able to work it out. Yeah. I just need to figure out. How to kind of tackle it? Mm -hmm. I, mean, local with the city I don't think that gets us around. Well, that, that, I, it may be that you said something that I've not thought of with the city. Pay the city. Pay the city. And the, the city, city pays. pays. The city state I, but I don't know that we can do that. Uh, that, that. There's still an issue that needs to. Uh, that's not. That's not something I even fathomed. Um, moving to uh, some of your other issues. We, the legal issues that are popping right now, none of these are things that I'm worried about having to, come with, having to go into executive session, so let me uh, quickly run through it. We have one of, the, uh, one of our lawsuits that we've been asked to be uh, taken out of. If you'll remember the, the issue with the, the, uh, the material that had gotten onto the car, uh, yes, yes. we've been asked to be relieved of being in the middle of that and be replaced with the other company. We haven't been released yet, but I feel pretty confident that we're gonna be released out of that and the, and the other is going to be replaced in that. In other words, the contractor that actually did it. Uh, another issue that we've got <coughs> it, it, that y'all need to be aware of, there was some discussions as to whether or not we were in the middle of a lawsuit with the coach and the, uh, the Octoball County Lake. Y'all need to understand, we've not technically been served yet, so we're not technically being sued yet. Um, that was purposeful, uh, and, and do be having a little prayer for Charlie Winfield. He's he's not been feeling very well, so he's been out of the office for the last couple of weeks, and we haven't had to have a discussion. But I have asked him to get a um, a better uh, better information to us as to exactly what the issue in terms of what we would be getting if we purchased the. Uh, the county lake and that that was the um, campgrounds out there mm -hmm. I, I asked him i said you know you're asking you, you put out there that you want us to, to look at purchasing this well i don't know what we're purchasing 
I mean, right now there's not a asset list stating, hey, this is what you're getting. So I've asked him to get us an asset list so that we can at least move forward with this in terms of knowing what it is that they are and how they're valuing this stuff. Uh, that will help us in negotiations. That will help us try to understand where he's coming from. Uh, whether or not we do it or not, that's irrelevant. But, but it does help us to know where they're coming from as far as where the, uh, this is. So we've not technically been served, nor have we been technically sued. What we have is a uh, notice that, 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 that they're trying to get us to the table to have more of a discussion about this. Um, we also have another issue, and goodness knows, I've got so many of these. Oh, the, um, this goes back to the county lake. We, a few, I think it was last time we were here, we had a, um, an issue with a LIDAR company that was in the university sent us a proposal. I'm having lunch with them, or we're having a discussion, it may be at lunch this week, uh, discussion uh, about what their services are provided. One of the issues were, and when we looked at it, I was a little concerned it was it was pretty expensive for the light on. Well, come to find out, he, he is willing to give us uh, more information than just doing a LIDAR. In other words, when you go out there and you do the LIDAR, you get information. This 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 group that uh, clients sent to us uh, actually will be able to take that information and put it into a usable thing. Now, the, the bill that they sent us or the, the bid that they sent us will more than likely be less than what they have sent us. Uh, my concern whenever I looked at it was when I checked out how much it was going to cost, I'm, I've got uh, uh, examples from, from other places that could done the LIDAR for a third of what these people were willing to do it for. The difference is he's able to take that information and plug it into a something usable, but he said that he intentionally went higher on this because he wasn't certain what we needed. So I'm gonna get him in contact with our DEQ people to make certain that that number is is more manageable. Get a good scope of work. Right, but right now we don't have a very good scope of what he are asking him to do. We kind of went out there and told him, look, we want you to do everything. Well, this, this guy looks at it and goes, I don't know what exactly you want me to do, and that was exact words to me were, I'm not sure that I understand what you need me to do. I said, so let's get together and make that, that happen. Um, there, was, there was a couple other things in my brain that I can remember them all. We do have uh, another lawsuit that, that, that was, um, that I've already talked about. Well, was there something else though? Line on County Lake with Mr. Winfield. <coughs> I think that's it I, at this point. Um, if there's something else, I'll call each of you um, unless somebody's got a question about anything. I just wanted to. We, we, sometimes we're so quickly getting in and getting out of here that it's hard for me to kind of tell y'all what's going on um, with some of these things. And we've got to get this testing, all of the testing stuff done out here at the county lake because the longer it takes us to get that information. So I will apologize I, in terms of getting the information uh, from uh, this gentleman with the LIDAR. I wished I had already understood why his bill was so high, but I, the, the amount that he had asked to, to do this project uh, was significantly higher than the next closest bidder on this thing, and that's what kind of threw me off. But once I got him on the phone and we understood what what the issue was, he's actually giving us, apparently they're giving us uh, that information into a usable place, whereas a lot of the other places that we got, uh, I got the quote from, did not. And to give you an idea of the difference, we're talking the LIDAR uh, for, say, uh, a group out of uh, uh, Tupelo that that was like thirty five hundred dollars. Our other one was like sixteen thousand, seventeen thousand in that range. And so I knew something was not not really after that after 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 was nine, wasn't it? Nine. 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 Nine.
So he has got two fingers. He got two fingers in the name. So we should have saw him know it's too well to be 18,000. I think I can get it done cheaper than that, though, so, which means that getting that money, we can use it at, to actually get the work done, some of this stuff. So um, we're talking this week, um, and, and I'll have you kind of uh, I'll have that the ears pinned back on that so we can move forward. Thank you, Rob. Uh, anything? I'll start. I, I just want to share that this weekend we have our first event back at Force Park um, since we closed for the pandemic and it, it sold out all of the stalls. Um, it's a three day event, um, sold out all of the stalls. We put up temporary stalls, sold out all those stalls. Um, and J3 is the, um, catching the overflow for us. Um, contestants from Florida, the Illinois, because it's a sporting event and it's a, you know, it's not like a, uh, it's, um, it's an exhibit event. It's not like a rodeo where everybody's sitting in the stands at one time. Um, and as a sporting event, we'll be able to manage it and within the guidelines. Um, some other things um, that involves the local community and helping other than just stimulating the economy, not just in our state, but locally. Uh, we couldn't open our concession stand. So we actually have some local food vendors that have restaurants that are coming out there to set up tents. And I think that they're really excited about this. This is just another way to generate revenue for them during a really tough time. Um, it's free for everybody to come out and watch. Uh, like I said, they'll move in, on, start coming in on Thursday. Uh, the event starts on Friday, it's Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So uh, free to bring the family out. Uh, there'll be vendors to shop as well. So love to see you out there. Well, yeah, I've already asked for the open road cut, so I don't have anything else. But there is something else. I don't know whether we sufficiently address the sheriff's concern about outdoor parties. We call them block parties or whatever, but outdoor parties. I have a lot of individuals who ask me, say, what are you all going to do about all these big parties going on on the outside? Uh, to, to even think about the fact that they're not social distancing, that within itself ought to be something for us to have some control, some control over the big parties that are taking place. There's no social distancing. No even wear a mask. So I don't know whether we sufficiently address the sheriff's concern, just give them a curfew at 12 o'clock, everybody have to be spread out at least on their way home. But is that going to really solve the problem that we have with all of these, I'm going to call block parties? Chad, you might, are you okay with what we have done so far? Well, and two, I, I think we need at some point in time need to address maybe our ordinance or, again and, and maybe put something in it addressing these block parties because right now we don't have anything, you know, and that would be up to, to you as a board of supervisors to decide which way you want to go but I mean I think now that, that I mean it, it's happening every weekend you know in different parts of the county so I think it, at least we need to address it on on the ordinance end of it. I, well I think I alluded to that is that ordinance as well as our vicious dog ordinance we may need to let's look at it and have the time maybe be at the next meeting or our October meeting open for right. some suggestions and some amendments yes. to the, both of those ordinances. I agree. We do. So good point, Supervisor Williams. Something that needs to be looked at. But I do think the thing that we'll give him teeth on the when I say him, the sheriff and his department, some teeth is this the executive order on the state level is still in effect. It's twenty or more people. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> well the thing but to be honest with you We'll get a call of a large party where we'll get there and it'll be 150, 200. You know, I mean, they, you know, it's like you're talking about social media. If that puts something out, they're going to have a party all of a sudden, instead of 20 showing up, 200 show up. So all we can do then is go in and now we're trying, trying to move cars out of the way and get the roads open back up <laughs> and all that. And really what we're doing is just moving them from one place to the next. You know, they'll, they'll leave one apartment complex, they'll run up you know, or, or whatever, so. Well, that, the dog ordinance and the roadhouse ordinance, you know, you take a, a good look at both of them. 
because I mean, far as you know, I mean, if they really true, that's all we do. Because a lot of times we can't even get in there. We got to leave our car and walk because we can't get in there. So we just, you know, which is a safety issue. Which is a, which is a bad safety issue. Yeah. You know. For y'all. Uh, Absolutely. Yeah. So anything else that's going to Yes, sir, I got two uh, requests to enter uh, on the private property for correction of drainage issues. Uh, one is at 5060 Rocky Road, Delma Gibson, property Delma Gibson, 50 Rocky Road, Delma Gibson. And the other one is uh, 36 George Lane for Arthur Brown. And both of these will be to drain the water from the roadway so it won't damage the property on the platform. All right, so motion by Superintendent Train. In the second, second by Supervisor Williams. Any more discussion on that? All of those in favor, say aye. Motion carried. Uh, my board of county was moving to a little earlier about I live in County Lake and, and about uh, the coach requesting uh, 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 talking about the possibility of us purchasing what's out there. I think I think this board. Because I'm here, as uh, we continue to work through <coughs> for a solution, <coughs> a lot of what I'm hearing from citizens is if, if we don't have to spend that kind of money out there, they would at least like to be able to use the lake and, and, and turn it back into a truly county owned public lake. Well, I think it would actually benefit and behoove this board. To maybe have an architect, a landscape architect, or somebody <coughs> to actually maybe maybe retain them, or have them to actually show us what could be out there at that lake, exactly what 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 that lake could uh, provide as far as recreational entertainment uh, and, and and generating the funds to actually sustain itself and, and, and you know going forward. Make, make payments on, on whatever amount of money that, that we end up having to spend out there. So I think that's something that the board needs, should be thinking about, and I think that that'll be something um, worth looking into. That's all I've got. I don't have anything from the chair, so what do you say? Adjourn, adjourn. Recess. Until Recess until Monday. Recess until the 14th. Recess until Monday. 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 Recess until Monday.